Good evening, everyone. Let's begin our meeting on item one, which is call to order. My name is Christine Robinson. I'm mayor of West Gray. Welcome to our July 21st, 2020 West Gray Council meeting. All members of council are present as indicated through their log on. We have a quorum. We are using audio only to conduct this electronic meeting. Video is not possible at this time due to limited bandwidth in some areas of West Gray. Bandwidth is challenging our ability to do a complete video broadcast, so for now we'll be sharing tonight's agenda on screen in addition to the audio. The agenda has been circulated and this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the West Gray website www.westgray.com. The technology for the meeting is being managed by staff. Please refrain from clicking any of the buttons throughout the meeting unless prompted. Now, before we continue, I'd ask Supervisor Hewlett to give an overview of some of the other key points for this evening's meeting. Supervisor Hewlett, please. Good evening. Before I begin, if you get disconnected at any time during the meeting, you can dial 1-647-558-0588 and when prompted, enter the meeting ID 822-2178. Both members of council and staff have been briefed on the various features of the Zoom meeting software and will be raising their hands to speak. Members of council will be using the green check mark to vote in favor of a motion and the red X button to vote against. Each member of council will then be called upon verbally to confirm their vote for the benefit of any guests who have joined us over the phone rather than online. If you have any technical issues throughout the meeting, you can send a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, throughout the meeting and I will be able to assist you. The chat is located in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hewlett. On to item two, moment of reflection. Members of council and those listening, please take a quiet moment of reflection. Thank you very much. We're moving on to item three, declaration of pecuniary interest, direct or indirect. Members of council, are there any declarations? Seeing none, we will now move on to item four, closed session. That is an NA for this particular agenda. Item five, matters arising from the closed session, NA. On to item six, comment period. Supervisor Hewlett, have we received any emails phone calls or correspondence submitted in our Dropbox pertaining to this comment period. I have not received any correspondence or messages. However, Councillor Herger does have her hand raised. Councillor Herger, do you have a question? I do not have a question. This evening I have a uh, constituent with us and his name is Mr. Raymond Elder. He has a comment about the giant hogweed that would be on WGR2 down in Normanby and was curious what our hogweed removal plan or strategy is. I have him here with me if, if we'd like to talk to him. Specifically. So the comment period relates to items on this agenda. We do not have um, that particular item on. I would suggest that the gentleman call into the office. Um, also, uh, we will uh, ensure that we have uh, the correct information provided to him. So thank you very much. Perfect. And he'll enjoy the rest of the meeting with us. Thanks very much. So we are now moving on to item seven, public meetings. That is an NA for this particular agenda. We're now moving on to item eight, consent agenda. Madam Clerk, there is um, a recommendation before us. Would you please assist with that? Thank you to you, Your Worship. Uh, the recommendation is that consent agenda items 8.1.1, council minutes of July 7th, 2020, 8.1.2, .1 committee of the whole minutes of June 30th, 2020, and 8.1.3, um, clerk recruiting committee minutes of June 2nd, 10 a.m. And the second portion of 8.1.3, clerk recruiting minutes of June 2nd, 2020, 11.15 a.m are hereby approved as presented and that consent agenda items 
to 8.4 inclusive be received for information. Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? If so, please indicate with a check mark. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Yes, I, uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, will move the motion. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I will second the motion. Thank you. I see we have a couple hands uh, here. Let's start with Councillor Hergert, please. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm looking at uh, page 12 of our agenda today, and that would be the G June 2nd minute, minutes. Uh, page 12 lists Deputy Hergert as a seconder on a notice of motion. So if we could just have that corrected. Absolutely. Also, I would like to pull the um, AgriCorp correspondence 8.3.2. And I would also like our clerk to clarify 8.4.1, which is Committee of the Whole will meet. Uh, this meeting would be in accordance with the Planning Act. I just wanted to make sure that we have that accurate, that the Planning Act is the reason for our meeting next Tuesday, the 28th of July. So I do know for the um, correspondence from the Township of Perth, which is in regards to the Abercorp uh, property tax, uh, property class tax rate program, so that perfect. item will be pulled and we'll deal with it immediately following this uh, motion, um, should it be moved, uh, should it be carried. Um, and also I'm wondering, uh, Madam Clerk, are you able to comment on the, the future meeting item or would your preference wait till after the motion? It yes, please then. To you, Your Worship. Item 8.4.1, the statutory public meeting, um, has been moved from the usual Committee of the Whole planning meeting to uh, the Committee of the Whole on July 28th. Um, it will be a small portion, a small item on that agenda. And the reason being, the applicant for the um, a zoning application, a rezoning application, is doing the rezoning to meet conditions of a consent approved by this council. The appeal or the notice period for the public meeting did not allow us to get it on the last planning committee of the whole meeting. And unfortunately, the appeal period will not allow him quite enough time to meet the timing for his consent approvals if we wait till the next committee of the whole planning meeting. But we are able to um, meet the needs of this resident by simply moving that statutory public meeting onto another existing meeting date. I see, so, thank you very much, Clerk, for that. Yeah, does that clarify? Absolutely, yes, thank okay. you very much. And sorry, I have one question if I may. Sure. Councilor Herbert, I missed which item oh, in here. the minutes is being corrected. Oh, page 12. Councilor Herbert, if you could clarify the, the item, the minutes and the item. Yes, so the page is page 12 of our agenda and it's the June 2nd meeting. And uh, the reference was to deputy as opposed to councilor. That's right, and it was the notice of motion from Councillor uh, Hamilton um, uh, against discrimination. So, We've got it, so we can, okay. okay. Thank, thank you, you so very, much for that. Yep, just to move things along, thank you very much for your accuracy, uh, Clerk. Um, so now, Councillor Townsend, please. waiting on your mic to be unmuted. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, I wanted to pull item 8.2, uh, the first item. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we here? Okay. So this one's dealing with the corporate communication strategy and visual identity guide. Yes, it is, please. And I'm wondering if we can deal with that at the same time we deal with Councillor Shea's recommendation under 16.2. 
No, we'll have to deal with it, um, and I'll uh, refer to the clerk, but we'll have to deal with it immediately following uh, the consent agenda. However, um, uh, Clerk Sharbach, could you please uh, enlighten us even further? Uh, through you, Mayor Robinson, the items that are pulled from the consent agenda um, need to be addressed immediately following the consent agenda. So at this point in time, we have item 8.3.2 following the consent agenda, and then after that, 8.2. Okay, don't bother pulling it. Okay, thank you. So uh, uh, for clarity, um, Clerk Sharbach, 8.2 has um, is status quo to stay within the motion. Okay. Okay, so we're only at this point going to pull um, the correspondence dealing with uh, Township of Perth, which is referenced as 8.3.2. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I have a couple of amendments for the council minutes. Please um, proceed. Thank you. The first one would be in my notice of motion um, regarding anti-racism. There's a typo in the motion that was carried over to the minutes. Um, in the first paragraph, the word is of, but it should read against. And so if we were to change that one word, it would then read, whereas West Gray Council condemns the unjust treatment, oppression, and racism against those who identify as Black, Indigenous, and people of color. So that was a typo in my notice of motion that's been carried into the minutes that I'd like to be um, amended, please. Um, and, and the clerk the has indicated oh, that you. that would be fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course, but you're welcome. <laughs> and then um, the second amendment within those same council minutes, it's 12.1 um, staff reports, third paragraph. Um, and it mentions that Director Sinwinski will bring back a report regarding staff overages and public works. However, I believe the report was to be about um, the landfill. So I would recommend changing um, overages to the word landfill, if that's appropriate for the clerk. Um, and then uh, I also have a couple, thank you. May I just say, absolutely, we will have that amendment made. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then if I could also lift correspondence 8.3.1, that's regarding a request from Power Skating School and 8.3.3, uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs. Okay, I can tell you that um, I just have word now okay. that 8.3.1, which um, is referenced as a request to uh, lower fees, uh, Blade One Professional Power Skating School has been withdrawn for consideration okay. by, yeah. So that one uh, we do not need okay. to ad address. Uh, everything is good in that regard. However, you did want to pull 8.3.3, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act. You got it. Thank Correct? you, Mary Okay. Robinson. So we've Thank got you. those two. Uh, and that's we all. See? Thank you very much. Well, you're quite welcome. I don't see any other hands. So I'm going back to the clerk. We do have the mover of the consent agenda as amended, I would say now. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, seconded by Councillor Hamilton. Um, but I wonder, uh, Clerk Sharbach, would you please read the motion then? Your Worship, uh, that consent agenda item 8.1.1, Council Minutes of July 7th, 2020, um, 8.1.2, Committee of the Whole Minutes of June 30th, 2020, and 8.1.3, Clerk Recruiting Minutes of June 20th, 10 a.m., and 8.1.3, Clerk Recruiting Minutes of June 2nd, 2020, 11, 15 a.m., are hereby approved as amended. And that consent items, a consent agenda items 8.2 to 8.4 inclusive be received for information with the exception of items 8.3.2 and, um, sorry, what was the second? 8.3.3. 8.3.3, thank you. Okay, any questions on the motion? 
calling the question on the motion. All those in favor, please signify with a check mark. Those opposed, rather, please signify with an X mark. I will begin. Mayor Christine Robinson here. I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion does carry. Thank you. So now we are moving on to item nine. Oh, uh, pardon me. Sorry. Uh, clear your dashboards. I just went, uh, I was absolutely excited to report out on uh, some activities. We are now going to directly deal with two of the uh, miscellaneous correspondence items, 8.3.2. This one is the Township of Perth AgriCorps Farm Property Class, class a Task Rate Program. And Councillor Herger, you were the member of council that pulled this. Please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. So the Township of Perth South has sent some correspondence through to us and has indicated that they have somewhat of a problem in this area of having uh, farm properties transfer back to residential. The residential tax is significantly different than farm class tax and therefore they're left with a noticeable gap annually of, in this case for Perth South was approximately $107,000 per year. I would also just bring our attention that our own municipal asset, the Saugeen Municipal Airport, has just received confirmation from AgriCorp that we will be included in the tax uh, status of agriculture for this year 2020 and 2021. This is an annual process that has to be maintained by providing the farm business number. Yep. And um, so I was just hoping to get some uh, idea from our own director of finance, if I may, do we in fact have a problem with this or is this a non-issue? Um, it seems like $100,000 could be significant, but I'm not sure that we have the same issue as Perth South. Director Mighton, are you prepared to um, address this item now or are you needing um, additional information and this be put on uh, an upcoming agenda? Are you able to respond to that, please? Um, yeah, I don't have our specific numbers. I don't believe it's as significant as what Perth South is um, experiencing, but there is always a bit of a shift, but um, we can certainly pull those numbers from uh, the last couple of years and, and take a look and see how our, how our uh, uh, write-offs measure up in that uh, farmland classification changes um, after the returned roll. But I don't believe it's as as significant of a dollar value for us um, the last few years. Okay, I, I take that and appreciate your, uh, your just, uh, just a quick glance review. If that's an area of interest, I'd appreciate you bringing it forward. If it's a non-issue, let's let it be. Thank you very much, Director. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, Clerk Sharbeck, so with regard to this, the member of council has had her questions um, asked and answered, so there would be further um, information pending. Um, how should we dispense with this item at this point? Thank you, through you, Your Worship. I, I think it's been addressed that um, Just leave it the Director as is. of Finance will look at those numbers and report back at a future meeting just to just to confirm that um, if there's any further action at that point in time at least council will have those numbers to know is it as significant as an issue as it is in first place right and so at we don't that need, point in yeah. time council can make a decision and now we just carry on Perfect. So we don't need to have any action on this one, which is great. Okay, now moving on to 3.3.3. This one's dealing with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act. Councillor Hamilton, you uh, pulled this item. How, what would you like to do with it? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Yeah, I was just reflecting on, um, so the, the letter talks about um, how as council, we've been able to meet online during COVID oh, yeah. for obvious reasons. Um, so I was just reflecting about moving 
forward and if we could make space, perhaps a community the whole, to have a conversation about um, uh, electronic meeting. I know that, um, so the, the province is proposing in their new bill that they've introduced that uh, they, they would enable municipal councils and local boards to meet electronically on a permanent basis, meaning after the emergencies ceased, we, we could choose to meet electronically um, should we should we wish. So I just thought it'd be, um, it'd be great to have a conversation at Committee the Whole at some point about, um, about electronic meeting or perhaps uh, hybrid meeting models or yeah. uh, voting by proxy, that kind of thing. And I was wondering if we could put that on a future Committee the Whole agenda to talk about and, and how that would um, relate to the procedural bylaw that we have as well. Yes, I have to tell you um, uh, to first off answer your question directly and then I wanted to mention something. Uh, yes, our, our clerk is working on um, a report that will uh, look at the possibility um, for us to continue to have electronic meetings and what that would look like here in West Gray. Will it be um, um, replacing our a night meeting, our physical meeting here in the chamber and have it online. I do note that we do get a fair number of individuals listening in um, mm -hmm. on our electronic meetings, um, upwards of 20 individuals at, at any given time. So that report is pending and yes, it will be coming to a future meeting. Research is being done on it, so I don't have an exact date, but uh, we'll anticipate a most interesting um, report. Um, I can tell you that I really find that this um, uh, Economic Recovery Act uh, very modern and progressive uh, where there's an opportunity for uh, the potential of proxy voting, elect a continuation of electronic meetings, not to mention a whole number of um, changes that I think are, are most positive. So we'll, we'll take a look at that legislation um, overall. Uh, does that mm -hmm. satisfy you uh, at this point? Absolutely. That, okay. that sounds great. A report's coming forward soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're okay. quite welcome. Okay, we are off the, um, the miscellaneous items that were pulled and we are now on item nine, which is communications from mayor and members of council. I'll start, uh, then I will go to the deputy mayor and then I'll go to Councillor Shea and then work my way around the uh, virtual horseshoe. Uh, here's a, a bit of an update I want to provide you with regard to COVID-19. Just a very simple update, a uh, report as per usual is coming to uh, a our committee of the whole. We've had um, reports since April, I believe, where reports have been uh, in and around um, coming to our committee of the whole meetings or, or council. So stay tuned for next week on that. Uh, however, um, here we go. The emergency control group continues uh, with its weekly meetings to provide updates and discuss new information. West Gray is taking a responsible planned approach to opening up based on public health information and provincial guidelines. West Gray green spaces have been open since mid-June and playgrounds in Durham are also now opened. The playgrounds in Newstead and Ayton are being inspected by staff prior to opening. West Gray Library continues with its curbside uh, service and staff will be installing summer ice in Ayton, uh, which I understand has been well received by the summer hockey skills and training camps. Uh, staff need to secure protective equipment and develop an enhanced cleaning program before opening uh, buildings. So stay tuned for more information as that plan uh, comes together. Our CAO will be bringing another update report to the July Committee of the Whole meeting. And finally, I'd like to remind everyone of Dr. Era's order of uh, July 14th regarding face coverings in indoor public spaces in Gray and Bruce. Uh, the following is from the Gray Bruce Health Unit website, uh, which you will find excellent information and more details about the order. Um, the Gray Bruce Health Unit Medical Officer of Health, which is Dr. Ian Era, is ordering all commercial establishments in Gray and Bruce to the fullest extent possible for all of the following that they ensure effective measures that are in place to maintain physical distancing of two meters um, amongst all employees and clients, ensure the availability of alcohol-based hand rub at all entrances and exits, and make the best effort 
verbal to restrict persons from entering the premises or remaining within a premise if not wearing a face covering. Turning away or refusing a customer is not required under this order. Um, more information can be obtained through the uh, public health website, which is uh, publichealthgraybruce.on.ca. I also want to just provide a bit of an update with regard to the Durham Dam, uh, actually the upper dam and, and the middle dam and lower dam I have some information about. Uh, with regard to um, the upper dam, the SVCA staff will be doing concrete repairs to the dam this week. The dam timbers and boards will be replaced next week, allowing the reservoir and swimming area to be filled by July 31st, 2020. The middle dam um, access will remain closed and fenced for the summer. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry intends to install a new fence. Um, I have indication that it's going to be four feet high and all new railings after Labor Day. Uh, Lower Dam SVCA is waiting on the Department of Fisheries and Oceans to review um, our re uh, SVCA request uh, for work at the dam. Uh, the boards will remain out until such time as this approval has been obtained. Um, it's SVCA's hope uh, that the work will begin after the August long weekend. That's the information I have from our new general manager and secretary treasurer Jennifer Stevens at the SVCA. The only other comment I want to uh, make is that I had an opportunity to visit at one of West Gray's new businesses called Mini and Me Boutique on Garifrax Road, uh, Garifrax Street, pardon me, in uh, Durham. Uh, I was um, had the opportunity to provide a certificate of congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, there's another business opening in town um, and I will be uh, providing a certificate and provide the information at our next council meeting on, on when that takes place. Uh, lots of things going on in the community. Uh, Deputy Mayor, do you have any information? Thank you, Mayor Robinson. It's Deputy Mayor Tom Hutchinson here. Uh, yes, yeah, so just a couple of Small things. Uh, yes, I'm hearing lots of good news about the uh, the playgrounds and the summer ice going in. Mainly the summer ice. There's a lot of people anxious to go uh, get out, get out, get some exercise. Um, well, the other thing I want to say is uh, congratulations to uh, Gray Bruce with our zero active uh, COVID-19 cases. That is uh, quite a quite a thing to be looking at. And you know, you look at the Canadian stats, and then you I'm kind of summarizing up what the USA looks like. So. I'd just like to say congratulations to all great Bruce. It's a wonderful thing and uh, everybody's doing their part. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Councillor Shea, please. Thank you. I don't have a, it's Councillor Shea. I don't have a whole lot to report. Um, I just, just that uh, I could say that the community gardens by the Durham Arena, which uh, Councillor Hergert was instrumental in reactivating uh, are now five eighths under cultivation. There's uh, five plots out of the eight seem to be seem to be being tended. Um, and I also <clears throat> attended at a new uh, eatery that just opened this week in Durham, Side Road Smoke, which makes ah. a very good uh, pulled pork and barbecue uh, lunch. So I'd highly recommend that. But that's all for me for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Herger, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Shout out to the new businesses, the, uh, the Mini and Me and the Barbecue. That's awesome. Good to see some new businesses on Garifraxa. Just something of online notice, the Durham and District Horticultural Society is having an online garden tour. And uh, the pictures are phenomenal, some from years past, but uh, the, the, they're just bringing lots of life back to uh, COVID-19 times. So anyway, that's really all I have to report today. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Townsend, please. Uh, thank you very much. A um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, still um, working with the insurance company to get the car uh, in the river from Aiton, and uh, hopefully we'll have some very good news next month. Um, I'll uh, keep people informed as appropriate on uh, my Facebook. Um, Economic Development is um, holding a uh, public meeting for uh, the Community Improvement Plan. Um, and, oh, excuse me, and uh, that will be uh, on um, August 11th. And I'm just giving a, a, a 
sort of a, an early warning for folks that uh, do listen to the, uh, the recording so that they'll know it's there and they're welcome to come out, uh, particularly the businesses. And I encourage anyone to participate as much as they can. Um, as part of the traffic safety working group, I attended a uh, traffic challenges webinar. It was really interesting seeing we're not the only ones that are having challenges with speed and safety. And there's lots coming out of that. Uh, still continuing with the participation um, in the Bruce Power teleconferences. And uh, Dr. Harris spent about an hour last night going through uh, in more detail exactly what Mayor Robertson um, covered in, in her um, uh, presentation here. And also present, uh, participated in a webinar with Minister uh, McLeod, um, who is a Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture. And um, she was reporting on uh, the surveys that the province has done regarding people's feeling about opening. And it's really interesting because regardless of which um, category you pick, most of them are around 20% each. So there's an even split from either being gung-ho and wanting to do it to being absolutely petrified and not coming out. So it'll be interesting to see how in the next month or so that uh, that happens and uh, continues. Um, Durham Legion is opening beginning Friday the 24th and uh, they're open from three to nine and they're also open on Saturdays. Those will be the only two days they're open. And yeah. on Fridays, Catch the Ace will be at 8 p.m. So support your local Lions Club. And thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson here. Uh, just a couple items to add. Um, so I'm pleased to see that things are opening up. Uh, again, we have to be careful and cautious, but uh, it's good to see that we're moving forward. Uh, the BIA um, is um, up and running still, even though it's you know slowly seeing some business come back. They they do have a new website. It's called townofdurham.ca. Oh, uh, town of Durham all together in one word, and um, it um, it's it's quite good, and I think it'll drive some some uh, business. So take a look at that. Um, I just had a couple of questions, uh, uh, maybe before I do, uh, I, I'm looking forward to the CIP uh, meetings, uh, public meetings to get some input there. Uh, I'm excited, excited to see that moving forward and hopefully that'll help some of our businesses. I uh, just had a couple of questions. Um, the, uh, Mayor Robinson, you mentioned about uh, the middle dam. Did you say there was fencing of going around the middle dam? I thought you said. Sure, I said that. Um, give me a second. It hasn't been, the middle dam is open, right? The upper and lower dams have uh, the dams out. Middle dam is open and is being used for swimming. So I'm just wondering, they're doing some work on the middle dam. That sounds like what you were saying there. Yeah. Um, the information that I have from the uh, Conservation Authority is the dam access will remain closed and fenced for the summer. The middle dam. Because it has been has been open, I believe. Hang no, on. Councillor, Councillor yep. Shea could clarify that. I'm sure he lives right there. Well, hang on a second. I'll go to um, Supervisor Hewlett. Maybe I just um, for clarity in terms of the correspondence that I received. Supervisor Hewlett, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And if I uh, may speak to uh, Councillor Hutchinson's question regarding the middle dam. Um, when they state that the middle dam has been fenced off, what they are stating is where. Um, there has been trail access or um, where you've been able to cross the dam previously that is fenced off there. So you are not able to cross the dam, but the swimming area is open as per usual. Sorry, that's a very good clarification uh, for sure. that. Okay, yeah, the, uh, my mind was right there in this description. So thank you for articulating that, uh, Supervisor Hewlett. Okay. Uh Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I, I guess I actually haven't been there right at the dam just to notice that, but uh, mm -hmm. look, sounds like they're going to do some work. That's mm -hmm. fine. Um, and just one other item, which maybe comes under new business, but I'm just wondering, are we looking at a bylaw for face masks? Uh, no, we are not. I'm, I'm going to um, take that uh, question right now. Uh, we're yeah. not looking for a bylaw at the local level at all. If it in fact is necessary, it will be um, a bylaw that will be considered at the county level. And I will provide the information accordingly to council, but that's how it will um, flow through if it in fact is necessary. Okay, I just see some other municipalities doing that. So I just wondered if that was something we were going to, to do, but that's, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and that's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. 
Well, you're quite welcome. Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, just to mention this Friday, Elmwood Chamber of Commerce is hosting curbside pickup wing night. Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> this Friday, 5 to 8 p.m. at the Elmwood Community Centre Pavilion. Um, also to mention this Friday, Public Health in the morning are, are having a Healthy Communities Partnership meeting over Zoom and will include updates from Dr. Era about COVID, uh, an update about the community safety and well-being plan, and updates about climate change panel and conference. Um, and lastly, I'd like to share with Council that I was accepted into FCM's climate leadership course. Uh, 40 elected officials from across Canada um, were selected for the course, which includes a few months of online learning and um, a summit in Ottawa, if the conditions are okay for that. <laughs> um, and all expenses will be paid by FCM. So it's a great opportunity to um, learn from others across Canada. Part of my assignment will be to report back to Council and our community about what I learned. And I also understand Councillor Shea will be participating in the online learning as well. So I'm sure we will have lots of great information to share with Council and our community. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Thank you, and congratulations, Councillor Hamilton. Uh, I think that is absolutely wonderful that you're participating in that way, um, and look forward to the information that you will bring back to West Gray. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, all right. We've completed item nine. We're now moving on to item ten, which is uh, delegation slash presentations. Under item ten point one, we have a delegation. Ann Coleman, Employer Engagement Program Manager, Ontario Living Wage Network. So uh, we'll hear her presentation. Uh, we do have a recommendation uh, listed on the agenda. Um, so we'll hear the presentation. If there's any questions from members of council uh, after the presentation, um, put your hand up and then um, we'll move on with the rest of our agenda. So that's just a, a snapshot of what we're doing. Uh, Supervisor Hewlett, could you please um, unmute uh, Ann Coleman's mic? And Coleman, are you there? Uh, yes, Mayor Robinson, I'm here. Thank you. Very good. Uh, welcome to our West Gray Council meeting. Thank you for being here and providing us with uh, a presentation. So um, please uh, go through your presentation and at the end we will take uh, any questions. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Mayor Robinson and Council, I'm very pleased to be here today to speak with you about the living wage um, and just to provide a little bit of education and background um, for uh, to help you with the motion later on this evening. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so what is the living wage? Uh, the living wage is the hourly wage a worker needs to earn to cover not just their basic expenses, but to have a little bit extra so that they can participate within community. And it's really meant to be a practical tool for reducing poverty. Uh, next slide. So in 2019, uh, the living wage for uh, Bruce and Gray County was calculated as uh, $18.39 an hour. Um, when we calculate the living wage, we look at things such as uh, shelter cost, food, transportation, uh, communication, um, all of the costs that somebody within your community would have. And we uh, put that through a calculator to be able to come up with an hourly wage. So living wage rates are different all across Ontario. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the benefits of, of a living wage? Well, I like to look at this from three perspectives. Um, first of all, the living wage is good for people. It gets them out of poverty. So people are healthier, they're less stressed, and they have a better overall quality of life. Um, but I also have heard from many employers that there really is a business case for the living wage. Um, employers have told me that when they begin to pay a living wage, they have higher staff retention rates. They spend less money on hiring and training staff. Staff are more loyal and more productive. Um, and finally, the living wage is good for community, which I think is particularly important today, um, speaking with public sector employer uh, as such as yourself. Um, so 
the, when some people in your community are earning a living wage, they have more spending money and they're better able to support your local community. Um, next slide, please. So in 2017, the Ontario Living Wage Network launched the Provincial Certification Program. Um, and we now have over 300 employers across our province who have made a commitment to pay a living wage and are recognized for that commitment through our program. Next slide, please. Um, so the commitment that they're making is to pay all of their direct and indirect staff at least the living wage. Um, I tend to get most questions about the program around the indirect staff piece. Um, what I'm referring to here is externally contracted uh, employees or, or third party um, workers that come into your business, um, into your municipal buildings, perhaps on a regular basis. Often we see this with um, cleaning, contracted cleaners, uh, perhaps security or regular food service. Um, and these roles, these jobs tend to be um, paid a little lower as well. So this is a, a part of the program where we can make a real difference in a community. Next slide, please. So um, we have three levels of recognition in our program uh, because we wanted to allow employers to phase in the implementation of the living wage. Uh, everyone is committing to reach the champion level of recognition, but particularly for larger employers or public sector employers, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get there. So our uh, base requirement is that of our supporter level where full-time staff are earning at least the living wage. We then have a leader level uh, where full and part-time employees are earning at least the living wage. And finally, that champion level includes those third-party contracted workers. Um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but we're only looking at people who work more than 120 hours uh, a week within your um, place of business. And uh, we do have a best effort clause with uh, this piece of our program. Next slide, please. Um, so I mentioned we have over 300 certified employers in the province. There are four municipalities at this time. So the city of Cambridge, the municipality of North Perth, the county of Huron, and the city of Kingston. And I've been speaking with many others um, right across Ontario. Uh, so I, my understanding is that North Perth is probably the most similar to West Gray. Um, this uh, municipality came in at the supporter level and they're just working on a few of their part-time workers, raising wages for a few part-time workers at this time. Um, and then they'll begin, once that's completed, then they'll begin to look at uh, any of their contract, uh, contracted workers. Um, and so finally, I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, listening to me today. Uh, public sector employers are really anchor institutions within our communities and even just having this conversation uh, is setting an excellent example for other businesses in your community. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um... Ann Coleman for um, a great presentation. Uh, very much appreciated. Members of Council, are there any questions? I do note that we do obviously have a notice of motion from Councillor Hamilton later on in the agenda, which is item 16, uh, notice of motion or, or direct motions um, relating to this uh, type of um, issue. We'll start with Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yes, uh, Council Hutchison here. Um, thanks, Anne, for the presentation. Uh, I have a question, probably maybe more for our Director of uh, Finance. Um, do we know what percentage of staff that we have would be below the um, um, living wage that's presented here? Director Mighton? Um, I don't have that just at my fingertips, but I would think it would be uh, some of our part-time um, individuals may be currently uh, below that, but I would have to take a look and see. Yeah, so I just, uh, I know um, Miss Valley West Gray as one of many um, people look at them as um, uh, good employers and, and um, our you know, preferred employers. So uh, I would think that we, we would be one of the leaders in terms of um, staff with living wage for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you. Councillor Herger, then Councillor Shea. Thank you, 
Thank you very much, Anne, for the uh, report. I'm um, just curious, you had mentioned this only applies to uh, individuals that work 120 hours per week. Is that is that accurate or what was the, um, the amount of time? 120 hours per week seems exhaustive. Uh, sorry, yes, I, might, I may have, let me clarify that. Um, when referring to indirect uh, workers or um, contracted workers, we are only looking at people that work for more than 120 hours in a year. So um, if you had someone coming in to change uh, floor mats at a building, for example, in the winter, uh, we wouldn't be looking at that type of contract. They're just in and out and, and they wouldn't meet that requirement. But if you um, contracted out cleaning services and that uh, those cleaners were coming in every single day and working probably, you know, 35, even 20 hours a, a week, that would, those are the contracted workers that we would be including within um, our living wage program. Program. So I do have a question. How does that relate or how do we um, put a clause in contracts that we do hire people such as cleaning services, even for the fire department? How do we ensure that our contracts have a living wage minimum of $18.39 per hour? Sure. So that's a great question. Um, once a contract comes up for renewal, um, so we certainly wouldn't be asking you to make any changes to your current contracts, um, in your RFP system, uh, system, you would include a living wage clause. And then um, once that uh, contract has been secured, the, the living wage clause then goes into the contract as well. Um, it, it only, it, the um, contractor, the business does not need to become certified themselves. It's just um, the people that are working within your um, business uh, with it for the municipality on that regular basis that need to earn at least the living wage. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, with our program, we go by the honor system. So um, we don't expect you to audit uh, or anything like that, but it's a signed contract with you. So they should be um, fulfilling the, their end of the, um, that, that commitment. And so when the municipality, um, or let's say the county, um, you mentioned County of Perth, is that right? Uh, you know, uh, the Huron County of Huron, yeah. Okay, so when the Huron County um, would approve that, would they also be requiring their lower tiers to at least uh, investigate or to learn about this program? Um, it's specifically just for the county, so it's not, uh, it's not for all of the tiers. Um, although some of them might be reaching out individually um, for the program, but no, it's, it's just specifically for the county uh, staff employees. Thank you very much, Anne. One last question for our chair. Is this something that is coming at the county level? Have I, have no I have no indication that it's on the upcoming agenda at this point. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Shea, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Coleman, for this presentation. Uh, this seems like a really, um, you know, productive, proactive uh, initiative that you're uh, spearheading here. Um, do you have allowances, as I believe minimum wage does, for things like a student or, uh, you know, an under age majority employees? Thank you for asking that question. Um, we do have a trainee category of worker who is exempt from earning the living wage for the purposes of our program. Um, the way we define that, and we're very specific in using trainee instead of student, um, but we, you know, anyone who would be in a placement situation or um, apprentice type work, um, intern, uh, they would be exempt from earning the living wage. That also extends to summer uh, programs that are meant to encourage youth employment. So uh, Canada's summer jobs would be an example of that. Um, so uh, so those, those folks would be exempt from the program. I will make a distinction between um, a part-time worker who happens to be in school um, they would still be looked at as part-time workers and would be expected to earn the living wage. Okay, um, yeah, that, that's great. Um, and I would like to invite uh, our CAO um, to comment just because um, 
this this is going to impact uh, throughout the uh, the wage scale. Like uh, it's not only people at the bottom of the uh, scale who would get bumped up a little bit to here, but like people who were previously making this amount would expect to get bumped up a little bit, you know, beyond this amount as well. So I'm just wondering if uh, Ms. Johnston ha uh, would have any insights or first reactions to this initiative if we decided to go in this direction. Madam CAO, please. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Council, for the question. Um, I, I was aware that this was coming forward, so I had a brief conversation with our consultant who's conducting that project for us. So she is being mindful of this. Uh, she, she's aware of this program as well, and it's on her radar for a conversation as we go through that project. So you're right, Councillor, we, you know, it, it does put a different lens on things, but that's okay. It's worth looking at. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and thank you, Anne, for making the time and energy for, for sharing this information tonight. Um, could you just, um, I was wondering about the timeline of moving through the, the phases. You mentioned there was three different levels. Um, is there a prescriptive timeline to get to champion level, or is there an average timeline that municipalities might take? Um, yes, thank you for the question. Um, we don't have a set timeline because we do recognize that sometimes things will come up and we need to be flexible with it. Um, it. We would hope that this would be something that, you know, somewhere between three to five years might be able to be implemented. Um, and I'll just remind you that with contracts, uh, you know, once you get to that champion level, if you're mid contract, there wouldn't be any expectations of changing it until that contract is up for renewal. Um, so that could be even push things out a little bit further technically. Um, but uh, it, it really just depends on, um, on, on the employer and, and, you know, how you're able to implement this and, and um, how quickly I, th I will say that for municipalities, um, it, they, it is taking um, longer because there, there's a lot to consider and, and you're working with unions and, and it's, you know, fairly complex. So a small business often can come in right as a champion or, or make it there in a year or two, but um, there's some uh, difference certainly for, for public sector employers. Great, thank you. And just one more question about um, uh, for employees who receive benefits, is there, does that affect the calculation of the living wage? Is that taken into consideration? Yes, it is. Um, so when we calculate the living wage, we include the cost for health insurance. And so when employer, an employer provides health benefits, we can actually um, use that to offset the cost of the living wage for those employees that are uh, receiving those benefits. So it essentially lowers the living wage rate for them. Okay, great. Thank, and thanks again for coming tonight. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. You're quite welcome. Further questions? Seeing none. Um, Clerk Sherbach, please. Thank you to you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council receives the delegation by Ann Coleman of Ontario Living Wage Network. <clears throat> is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Herger, are you moving this motion? It's Councillor Hamilton who got unmuted. Is that okay, Mayor Robinson? <laughs> um, no, we'll need uh, Councillor Hergert to be unmuted first, and then I will call on you, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you. Councillor Hergert, are you moving this motion? Being so amicable, maybe I should allow Councillor Hamilton, but... Uh, nope, we're moving ahead. If you're moving it, move, yes or no? Move. Don't move. All right. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Are there any questions on the motion? Seeing none, calling the question on the motion. All those in favor, please indicate with a check mark. Those not in favor, please indicate with a, an X mark. All right, uh, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. 
Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson in favor. Thank you. So Councilor, Councilor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councilor Shea, yes. Councilor Hergert, state your name and how you're voting. Councilor Hergert, yes. Councilor Townsend, state your name and how you're voting. Councilor Townsend in favor. Motion does carry. We're moving on to item 11, which is business arising from the previous meeting. Clerk Sherbach, are there um, any items? Thank you. Uh, through you, Worship, no, I have received no information or items regarding business arising from the previous meeting. Thank you. Item 12, then, members of council and those listening, we're now dealing with staff reports. The first one is item 12.1, approval of accounts. So we'll first um, go to Director um, Mighton, Director of, of uh, Finance and Treasure. Treasury, is there any information that you wish to provide to us at this point? Um, the accounts do include uh, various dust control, calcium chloride expenses, which uh, were around $125,000 in total. So that is included. Otherwise, it's um, some fairly standard expenditures in with the accounts. Um, we continue to work towards getting the uh, reports in an accessible format. So we will uh, continue to work on that template for future yes. meetings. And I thank you for that. I, I had a couple calls from citizens that were most interested in receiving a hard copy of the um, the vouchers, and uh, they did receive them. Um, some have asked for them on a continuous basis, so that's fine until we work through and have the ability to include them with our um, website. But I do appreciate the efforts that are being made. I'm first going to ask for um, Clerk Sharbach to read the motion. I'm going to ask for a mover and seconder, uh, so utilize your check marks, and then I'm going to go back to uh, for questions. Okay, um, Clerk Sherbach, please. Thank you to you, Your Worship. The recommendation is the Council approve voucher number 12-2020 in the amount of $764,540.38. Councillor Townsend, are you moving this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm moving the motion. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, I second the motion. Questions now. Councillor Herger, then Councillor Hutchinson. Yes, thank you, Chair. So I noticed that we have some um, expenses related to the West Gray, West Gray Police Department. And this would be two different items that are worth $50 each calls out for false alarm at Normanby and at Newstat. And I was curious if this was uh, a regular uh, regular expense. I guess I, I don't recall seeing it before on our expenses, on our vouchers. Director um, Mighton, are you able just to comment on, the, on this inquiry from a financial yeah. perspective? Yeah, so that was uh, a couple false alarm calls. It's not a regular item, but it has occurred over the years uh, whenever there is a false alarm. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Hergert? It's, uh, it's not a policy that I, I uh, am excited about. So anyway, it's, it's just noted. Okay, Councillor Hutchinson, please. Uh, Councillor Hutchison here. Um, just a question. I see under property standards, page five in the uh, voucher report, um, there was some legal cost associated with that. Uh, it just brings a question to mind. Uh, are we going to have a report um, in the near future regarding property standards? Madam CAO, are you able to provide comment? I know it's not from a financial perspective, but it, it lends itself. If you could provide that brief comment. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for the question. I'm not quite sure I understand what you were thinking. We do bring um, the quarterly report that our bylaw officer provides stats on, and I don't think that that's going to be stopped, so that's the only thing that I'm aware of. 
Okay. Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah. yeah, I just thought we had talked about uh, having a uh, report with our coming from our bio officer. Maybe it was a quarterly. Uh, I'm not sure mm -hmm. uh, if that's if that's what um, what works. I guess we can do it that way. Okay. Thank you. Um, I had one other question, if I may. Go ahead. Um, just under economic development, page 17, and maybe the CAO might be able to answer this. I don't know. Um, there was a charge for business signs, $120 to our, our sign uh, company. Uh, I'm just curious. I can't remember in economic development what we what signs we would have purchased. Can someone answer that? Madam CAO, please. Um, th thank you, Mayor Robinson, and thank you, Councillor. That was a sign for a new business in the Durham Industrial Park. So we had we, economic development had put in the new um, sign, the, the directory signage that shows all the all the companies, and there was a new business that came on board. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, that, right. So that board that we refurbished, um, it's just an addition. Does that get charged back to the company then, or are we uh, covering your cost? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't carry. Yes, it does. Director yeah. Ryan, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Okay, yeah. that's fine. I just wondered why that I wasn't sure what that was. Thank you. Thank you. Director Mighton, did you want to elaborate? Uh, that was going to be my comment was that the uh, the sign okay. plates are uh, charged out uh, similar to past practice for the existing businesses that were listed on the industrial park sign. So it, it does get invoiced out to the uh, particular business. Right. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Hergert, your hand is still up. Are you able to um, remove your hand or is there a, an additional financial no. question? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members of Council, anything further? Seeing none. On the motion, all those in favour, please signify with a check mark. If you're not in favour, please signify with an X mark. All right, to begin, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favour of the um, motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, in favour. Councillor Hergert, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favour. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favour. Motion does carry. We're moving on now to item 12.2. This is the um, Infrastructure and Public Works, so it's IPW, a Bruce Street uh, water main update. Director Sharinsky, please. Uh, can you hear me, Your Worship? Yes, please go ahead. Sorry about that, just having some technical issues. Uh, good evening, Your, uh, your Worship members of Council. Um, essentially, this is a report um, uh, regarding the replacement of a water line at the intersection of Bruce and Chester Street. Um, this area is um, uh, in the final stages of uh, paving uh, um, as an ongoing project from last year. And um, most recently um, in February, we had a water main break under uh, the road at that intersection. And uh, as a result of the repair of that water main break, uh, it was advised uh, by engineers that we um, at least replace uh, the water main under that intersection before the final coat of asphalt is put on it this year. Um, and so um, I had this report before you uh, to, um, uh, as a resolve to that repair and, and the cost of that repair. Excellent. Clerk Sherbach, could you please read the, um, the motion? Thank you, to you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that Council receive report IPW Bruce Street Water Main Update, and further, that Council approve the upgrade to the water main at the intersection of Chester and Bruce Street North to be funded from the Durham Water Sewer System at an estimated cost of $50,805 plus applicable taxes um, to be funded by the Durham Water Sewer System budget. 
Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor Robinson. It's Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I'll move the motion. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, yes, I second the motion. Questions, comments from members of council, beginning with Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you. Um, I have two questions. Uh, first of all, I believe the request was to receive the report rather than approve it since all the funding is coming out of the water sewer budget uh, system. So uh, can we get a clarification on that first before I ask my other question? The councillor is looking for just a, an understanding of not only receiving the report, but the action required. Um, Clerk Sharpak, please. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay. thank you. To you, Your Worship. The recommendation is um, two parts. First, to receive the report from Director Sarinsky, and the second part is to approve um, this change to um, the planned work, to approve the change and the upgrade to the water main at the intersection of Chester and Bruce Street North. So it is an extra cost of approximately $50,805 that was not included in the original project plan. And that's why it requires council approval. Thank you for that. I'm also going to ask uh, Madam CAO to provide additional clarity. Thank you, Clerk Sharpock. Madam CAO. Uh, th thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> and thank you to the clerk for that clarification. Councillor, what I think we're really looking at is the uh, approval from council to increase the loan that has yet to be secured by the $50,000. Uh, it would be prudent for us to do this work and it would also be appropriate for the water system to pay for the, for the work now, rather than, you know, worst case scenario, we paid everything and then we've got to go back and undo that new paving. Um, I would invite our treasurer to confirm that that's my understanding of what we're seeking approval for tonight. That sounds great. So let's go now to Director Mighton. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that is uh, correct. It wasn't included in our original budget for this year, but has come up. Um, it will be funded from the water system, but it wasn't as part of the budget. So it will, we will roll it into the uh, final financing for the Bruce Lambton project, but it wasn't anticipated. So it is an additional cost. Councillor Townsend. Yes. Um, my second question was going to be, what is the um, annual increase to the cost as a result of this work? So the like the annual financing cost, we haven't gone to the uh, we haven't got that financed yet for the entire project. So I don't have the uh, annual amounts at this point. Okay. Could you We're, provide that when you do? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, no, we'll have a bylaw that will come back to approve um, the method of financing the term, the rate, um, and uh, that will be approved by bylaw once we get that secured. Thank you very much. Uh, that was everything. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson here. Um, just a uh, thought. When I look at the engineering report, and this is this is a question maybe for the director. Um, the uh, it talks about the existing water main being a hundred millimeters uh, cast iron um, being replaced. My qu my question is, uh, what about the other? Um, water main that runs to the north is it the same it's going to be the same right it's going to be 100 mill mill millimeter cast iron which if this is failing are we looking at replacing some other uh, water main that's going to be running north and, and eventually probably up the hill to the um, new subdivision so do we have any information on that part of it yet uh, director yep yeah. <clears throat> uh, three worship um, at this point in time, Councillor Hutchison, we don't have um, um, additional information with respect to that water line. Uh, the main purpose of this upgrade is because it was noted that the water line um, across the intersection where this new asphalt is going is going to be is kind of fragile. 
So um, by replacing it with uh, you know um, a new um, with a new pipe and uh, with it being a little bit larger, um, it will we won't have to dig up that intersection and so forth to accommodate this upgrade uh, in in the future, like with respect to the water line. Right. So so I'm just thinking in terms of future. Um, you know, while we got that dug up, are we, you know, maybe we need to do some investigating or uh, eventually we're looking at future cost of upgrading that water main to the north, uh, given that this, this intersection is in bad shape, uh, the line coming in. So I'm just, I'm just thinking down the road, uh, we might be looking at some extra costs here. Uh, absolutely. If you worship, I can, um, uh, um, we will be mindful of that, uh, uh counselor. And, uh, if, uh, I can bring that forward to council if that is the will of council to, uh, uh, you know, uh, inform council of any further uh, upgrades with respect to that water line. Okay, thank you. Yeah, fair enough. Councillor Hamilton, please. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh -huh. um, so just following up about the letter from the engineering consultants mentions in that same the second paragraph that a uh, verbal recommendation was made to West Gray to replace the water main um, uh, within the intersection. However, it was decided not to proceed with the replacement apparently due to lack of funds. I, I think this might be before our time on council. I'm, I'm not sure. I know this project's been in the works for a little while. I'm just looking for a little clarification about when this information was received and how that decision was made to not proceed at that time and was it um escalated to council did, did council receive that information to uh to make a decision as well thank you you're welcome ben schwinski please um uh, director schwinski <laughs> thank okay. you no problem um, okay uh essentially uh, through your worship um that water main break happened this past February. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually dug up the road this past winter. And um, the, uh, so it was a reactive repair. Um, and when the repair was made and, um, uh, and so forth in the winter, just to get the line working again and to restore service, um, it was as a result of that repair that was brought to, uh, it was brought to the attention of, uh, of myself and the, and the engineer. Um, and, and that's how we ended up uh, at this point right uh, as we are. Um, so, um, and, uh, and therefore, before we go back in and basically uh, dig up the intersection again uh, and repair that one section or replace that one section, like I said, so that would, uh, uh, and then when the asphalt gets uh, put down this uh, later on this summer, we won't have to dig up new asphalt in the future. We can just continue on um, moving north and uh, and so forth and not have to disturb the new asphalt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Director. I thought perhaps um, when it mentioned during construction, I thought perhaps they meant... Uh, you know, a year and a half, two years ago when the project first started. Um, but I hear what you're saying, uh, the, the concern was flagged in the winter time. Um, yeah, yes, that, okay. yeah, that's, so that's what I, that's what I, that's is, uh, that's to my, that's my understanding, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. You're quite welcome. Further questions? Seeing none. Um, on the motion then, all those in favor, please signify with a check mark. Those opposed, please signify with an X mark. All right, I'll begin. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. 
motion carried. We're now moving on to the final report on this agenda. This is dealing with, um, well, first of all, item 12.3, West Gray Records Retention Bylaw. Um, Clerk Sharbach, this is your report. Um, would you care to take us through this? And then I will ask you for um, the motion. So we'll, um, we'll work in um, our regular sequence. Um, your report, please. Okay. Thank you to you, Your Worship. This report uh, is just to update Council on the next steps. I know that the Tom Rims records classification system was purchased um, just prior to my arrival. And so moving forward, picking that project up and moving forward with the records management system, I did want to clarify for Council the next steps and explain why the bylaw is um, just receiving first and second reading. We are required to have that approval from our municipal auditor, and then we can do a third and final reading afterwards. And at that point, we have a, an approved system that we can implement and start working with. Very good. Now I look to you to read the, uh, oh, the motion. Right. <laughs> Thank you. The recommendation is that West Gray Council hereby receives the report from Clerk Sharbach regarding the West Gray Records Retention Bylaw. Thank you. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, are you moving this motion? Councillor Hamilton, yes, I move the motion. Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes, I will second the motion. Are there any questions, members of Council? Seeing none, I will then, oh, before I go any further, Councillor Townsend, please. Thank you very much. I couldn't switch fast enough from one to the other. Um, there were two observations that I, um, I uh, noted when I was going through uh, the actual uh, bylaw itself, um, which was attached to the report. Um, and it had to primarily do with Schedule A which is the actual program policy um, schedule. Um, okay, first, go in, ahead. In the fourth bullet in the first paragraph, it, it says that retention records schedule applies equally to paper and electronic records uh, with the exception of records in a structured database. I wonder if you could tell us what type of records are stored in a structured database? Kirk Sherbach. that are stored in what? Okay, um, Councillor Townsend, um, because our, our clerk is um, also doing minutes, I would just ask if you could please repeat your question. She's keeping up very, very well. But just for clarity, we're, we're now looking at uh, the schedule. Would you mind repeating your question? Sure, under purpose, there's a sentence and then there's four bullets. And in the fourth bullet, it refers to uh, records that are exist in a structured data system, database system, are exempt from the retention record schedule. And I'm just wondering what type of information is stored in those structured databases. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think I can find my... Okay, um, before we go any further, um, because you're locating it, Madam CAO, please, are you able to assist with this question? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor and um, Council Townsend. I believe that language speaks to some of the other software that we use, like booking for recreation um, reservations that has its own retention. So is that, is, I think that that's what we're looking at for these database systems. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Sorry. Well, thank you, Councillor Townsend. And I, um, I think that, that clarity, um, Clerk Sherbach, anything further or? No, um, thank you, Your Worship. I um, was having trouble with my mute and unmute. Fair enough. <laughs> that was my end, I don't That's think okay. that was <laughs> we, so we all work together. Um, but yes, that would, um, the structured database systems is perhaps complicated language, but it really refers to uh, 
very specific separate databases, not our corporate records in-house. Wonderful. And Councillor Townsend, I, I see your hand up again. Are we good? I have one more comment, actually. Okay. Um, on the same page, under definitions, it, uh -huh. it defines the term destroy, but in section E, it says, um, see also definition of destruction. So I'm wondering if they should both be destroy or both be destruction. Okay, again, um, uh, just direct us to where you're looking. I see it there. We can, um, the intent of the bylaw and the definitions is clear, but we can certainly change definition C, destroy, to the definition for destruction. It is um, a list of definitions provided with the Tom Room system, but we can. It's the same word. We, yes, yeah. we can tidy that up if that makes a difference. Thank you for a detailed eye, Councillor Townsend. Okay, and that was all my comments, thank you. Okay, anything further, members of council? So we do, uh, Councillor Hergert. Thank you, Chair. Um, just going back to that structured database systems, I'm just curious how many of those systems might we have? We have booking, but we also have another one for the building department. And then we ha maybe have another one for uh, infrastructure, public works. So I'm just curious how many of those, and maybe structured database systems, maybe could we say instead uh, contractual um, databases? You know, where we have a contract with someone no, for a database? that's a different meaning. Different meaning, okay. Is there some way to um, suggest that those are, like, like uh, the clerk had mentioned, they are, um, they're another party's material, really. They're off-site, they're not our documents to store. Yes, to you, Your Worship, that's correct. Any of our records, whether they're electronic, whether they're maps or paper, um, any kind of format, all of our records are included in the records management system and we need to classify them so that we know how long to keep them and make sure we don't get rid of them too soon, that we're meeting legislation, but we also need to be able to find them if there was ever a request for those documents or those records. So the other party's information um, that we may access as we're doing our work isn't, they are not records that are under the care and control of the municipality. So you're correct, Councillor Herker. It's, it's uh, somebody else's piece to look after. <laughs> yeah, so, so could we use those words that, you know, that um, we're, we're talking about electronic and paper records with the exceptions of records that exist outside of West Gray's control through structured database systems? Madam CAO, please. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Hergert, would it, would it help if we added a definition for structured database system in the definition section? I, I yeah. do like the language of the purpose, just to keep it simplified, but we could add that as, uh, you know, another definition. Well, absolutely, because I think as we go to more online systems, these records might not be in our control. And I think that's what we really want the public to understand, that some of these will be, we can, we can hand them over, and other times we're contracted with a third party for the doc, for the information or the documents. Okay, and it further Sorry. enhances what Councillor Townsend was inquiring about. Abs yeah, absolutely. So a further definition of structured database would be perfect. Okay, good. Further questions, questions members of council? council? Then on the motion. Oh, okay. Councillor Shea, please. It's Councillor Shea, just to get uh, one more level of complexity to this. Uh, our C5 system, I assume, is data that is within our care and control. Madam yes. CAO? Oh, uh, Clerk Sherbach. Sorry. We're unmuting the clerk. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, the eScribe software helps us produce the electronic agendas and, and agenda packages. 
and the minutes that are posted on our website. So those are definitely our records, definitely in our care and control. It's just software that we use to create those records. Okay, thank Does you. that help? Yep. You're good, Councillor Shea? Yes, thank you. Great, great questions, members of council. Anything further? So then on the motion, all those in favor, please signify with a check mark. If you're not in favor, please signify with an X mark. To begin, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. This motion does carry. Now we are over to bylaws, I think. Yes, item 13, bylaws. Beginning with uh, proposed bylaw under 13.1, uh, proposed bylaw number 50-2020, um, a bylaw to amend licensing of dogs. Clerk Sharbach, please. Thank you. The recommendation through you, Your Worship, is that Westway Council gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw 50-2020 being a bylaw to amend the licensing of dogs bylaw number 87-2009. Is there a mover for this motion? All right, I see a hand up, so I'll have to wait for that. Councillor Hergert, I think your hand was up first. We'll go with Councillor Hergert. Are you moving this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, yes. Thank you. Questions, Councillor Townsend. Uh, my question was regarding the previous um, motion, I wanted to make sure that, that because it wasn't reread, I wanted to make sure that it had as amended added to it because there were suggestions and commitments to make changes. Clerk Sherbach. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship. Um, the Previous motion was just to receive the report, but when we get to the bylaw portion, it will be as amended. So I'll actually amend the bylaw, not not my report. And then those yep. two changes Thank to the definitions much. will be clarified. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have a mover and seconder for this uh, bylaw. Let's just refocus. Proposed bylaw number 50-2020. Um, this is dealing with uh, amendment to the licensing of dogs. Uh, starting with uh, questions from Councillor Shea, then Councillor Herger. Uh, thank you. Yes, it's Councillor Shea. Uh, I had somebody call me about this uh, and their concern was that uh, with farm dogs that uh, licenses, the actual tags themselves, don't last forever. Uh, and with the annual, the old annual replacements, you get a new tag every year. Uh, what, what, is there a provision for this if uh, uh, an owner does need a replacement tag? Yes, there is a provision. And I think I'm working through uh, Clerk Sherbach on this one. Okay, thank you. One moment, please. We're just waiting on um, unmuting our clerk. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, it's not just farm dogs. Lots of uh, very active dogs lose their tags, some of them <laughs> fairly regularly. So at any time, owners can come in and get a replacement tag. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the fee for a replacement tag is. It would be a, mi a minimal fee just to cover the cost of the tag, possibly $5. Okay, great, thank um, you. But yes, they can just come in and get a replacement and then that'll be reflected on their license. Director Mighton, anything further from a financial perspective? I think you have an answer for us. Uh, yes, the current uh, replacement tag fee is $5. Uh, Kirk Sharbeck was correct. Yep. Thank you very much. Anything further, Councillor Shea? No, thank you. Councillor Hergert then, please. Thank you, Chair. I would just like to applaud staff for bringing forward a, a possible solution on how to save some money. So thank you very much to our staff. 
Yeah, this is, I, I echo that, Councillor Hergert. Um, when we had the um, report at the Committee of the Whole uh, where we had this initiative brought forward, I think it was most exciting. And it's just one step uh, closer when we're looking at how we are being efficient, but also um, reusing the tags year over year, unless, of course, the dog is most active and, and needs a replacement. Uh, any further questions, members of Council? Very good. On the motion then, all those in favor, pardon me, please signify with a check mark. Those opposed, please signify with an X mark. Christine Robinson, Mayor Christine Robinson rather, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor, um, I'm gonna say Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Motion does carry. We are now on proposed bylaw under 13.2, uh, proposed bylaw 51-2020. Uh, Clerk Sharbach, is there any uh, additional information keeping in mind? We're only looking for first and second. Um, would you please read the motion, please? The recommendation is that West Gray Council gives first and second reading to bylaw number 51 2020, uh, being a bylaw to provide a records retention program policy as amended. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Councillor Hutchinson, yes, I can move that motion. Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes. Questions or comments, members of council? Seeing none, on the motion then, all those in favor, signify with a check mark. Those opposed, signify with an X mark. I will begin, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend, please state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Hergert, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hergert, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. We are now moving on to item 13.3. This is dealing with proposed bylaw 52-2020, adopt communication strategy 2020. Clerk Sherbach, could you please read the motion? Thank you, through your worship. The recommendation is that the West Gray Council gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw 52-2020, being a bylaw to adopt a communication strategy. Is there a mover for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I'll move the motion. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Shea, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Shea, I second the motion. Questions or comments? On the motion, all those in favor, please signify with a check mark. Those opposed, please signify with an X mark. I will begin. Uh, Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, not in favor. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Herger, not in favor. I'm sorry, I, I was trying to get my hand raised before we started comments and voting. Okay. Uh, Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion does carry. We are now dealing with um, item 13.4,
and this is dealing with proposed bylaw 53-2020 confirming bylaw. Kruk Sharbach, please. Through you, Your Worship, the recommendation is that West Gray Council gives first, second, and third and final reading to bylaw number 53-2020, being a bylaw to confirm the matters addressed at the July 21st, 2020 regular council meeting. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you moving this motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm moving the motion. Councillor Hamilton, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hamilton, yes, I second the motion. Questions or comments? On the motion, questions or comments? On the motion, please signify um, if you are in favor with a check mark, those opposed, signify with an X mark. I will begin. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Oh. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Hergert, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Motion carried. We are now moving on to item 14, new business. Oh, please clear your dashboards. Is there any new business? Pardon me. Pardon me, uh, members of council and those listening in. I have uh, been informed that there has been a, a request for a break. So let's take a 15 minute break. Uh, we will reconvene at, well, we'll reconvene at nine o'clock. Um, all right, everyone. Um, uh, everybody okay with that? I just wanna make sure, could you just give me a check mark if you're all good with it or thumbs up? Great, I'm seeing those check marks and thumbs up coming in rather quickly. We will see you at nine o'clock and uh, we will, I will then call item 14. Thank you very much, everyone. Hello everyone and welcome back. Thank you very much for that uh, brief break. I want to ensure that all members of council are present. So if you are here, could you please indicate with a check mark? We've got everybody here. Thank you, please clear your dashboard. Okay, we are um, um, reconvening and we are under item 14, new business. Is there any new business? Councillor Shea, please. Hi, hey, Councillor Shea, um, I, on the break, I was just uh, uh, looking at the procedural bylaw and in the procedural bylaw, it says that uh, notice uh, under definitions uh -huh. 1.44, it says a notice of motion, it goes on to define a notice of motion, it says the clerk shall include the motion in the agenda on the next regular council meeting under new business. Yes, you're very astute. And we were just talking about that on the break. Um, this is how it's been done in the past. Um, the clerk, clerk Sharbach has um, pointed out to me, according to the procedural bylaw, the notices of motion should be under item 14. She was going to um, deal with that uh, for our next agenda and also send out an email um, advising of it. That's my quick summary. However, <laughs> Clerk Sharbach, could you please explain it procedurally? Okay, certainly through you, Your Worship. Um, it is interesting timing. I just explained to the mayor that we need a little bit of housekeeping to get our agenda matching our procedural bylaw. Even though it is under review, it's what we've got to work with right now. So I know this is, um, I hadn't changed anything on the agenda listing from the way it had been, but this one item, new business, 
moving forward. That's where the notices of motion will be printed under and they'll be voted on by council as new business at that meeting. So you're absolutely right on that, um, councillor. And it is a little bit of housekeeping on how we present our agenda. So I'll send out a reminder email with the next agenda that just to make note of that little housekeeping. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Councillor Shea, I, I also want to mention that I will be having a notice of motion as well. So after we deal with the, the two notices of motion that are on the agenda, um, I'll be speaking to one that I will be bringing forward at the next council um, meeting. I, but it would, it would normally go under this section, but we're just following suit right. uh, today with this agenda. And uh, so I'll be addressing that under item 16, um, not under item 14. Thank you for reading the procedural bylaw during your break. Um, all right. Anything further, Councillor Shea? No, thank you. Okay, Councillor Herkert, your hand is up. Yes, thank you. So today I forwarded a notice of motion to our okay. clerk that I would like included on the next agenda. Councillor Herkert, we'll be dealing with that. I, I absolutely know about that. We'll be dealing with that under item 16. Perfect, thank you. You're quite welcome. And I have it noted here. Anything else, members of council? Okay, so item 15, um, Madam Clerk, addendum. There is nothing for this particular There's agenda. That's Thank correct. you. Here we are, swiftly on item 16. Um, so we do know there are two um, motions before us and I have a notice of motion and so does Councillor Hergert. I will ask if there's anyone else at the appropriate time. Item 16, notice of motion, direct motion. Item 16.1, moved by Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Hamilton, I invite you to read your motion and then I'll be looking for a seconder. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, a notice of motion regarding living wage. Whereas West Gray is currently undergoing a review of employee wages and compensation. Whereas Grey Bruce Public Health promotes a health in all policies approach and calls upon local governments to consider the health implications of policy making. Whereas the Corporation of West Gray is an anchor institution in our community and could be an example for other employers. Whereas a living wage is the hourly wage a worker requires to cover their basic expenses and this wage is updated annually for a region by the United Way of Bruce Gray in alignment with the Ontario Living Wage Network's uh, framework. Whereas the benefits of becoming a living wage employer include increasing well-being for employees, enhancing recruitment and retention, and receiving public recognition for demonstrating commitment to socially responsible practices. Whereas the Ontario Living Wage Network certifies living wage employees, sorry, employers, and once certified, employers voluntarily pay a living wage and maintain their certification with the network as new rates are calculated for the area. Therefore, be it resolved that staff report on the feasibility of a living wage for the municipality of West Gray in cons consultation with United Way of Bruce Gray and the Ontario Living Wage Network to be received ahead or in conjunction with the compensation review report. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a seconder for this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I'll second the motion. Are there any questions on this motion? Councillor Herger, please, then Councillor Townsend. So I believe that we asked staff to already bring back a report on the feasibility of living wage in conjunction with our consultant at the last meeting. And that was how I recall the minutes of the meeting uh, being reflected. And so I actually, um, you know, I appreciate the, um, the idea of a living wage employer and I look forward to that. But I look forward to that in conjunction with our consultants. So I don't know if there's any further work that our staff would be doing other than our CAO's direct connect with our consultant about the benefits, et cetera, that, uh, that staff currently enjoy and how that reflects into that living wage. So I think the work is actually already being done. 
Okay, I'm going to ask Madam CAO for clarity on that question. Councillor Hergert, Madam CAO, please. You're welcome. Madam CAO, please. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, Councillor Hergert, thank you for, um, for that information. Um, there hasn't been any work done other than me making the consultant aware that this is a topic that Council will be discussing and has touched upon. Um, so she is aware of the initiative. She's actually aware of the um, living wage um, philosophy as well, but uh, I don't recall receiving a motion as, as directly um, as, as direct as this one. I, I believe, from my understanding, that was a conversation we were having. I had the conversation with the consultant and she was waiting for me to give direction if that's something that we're including in the scope of work. So if this passes, then that would, that would be that adjustment that I'd be looking for. Councillor Herger. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Councillor Townsend then. Thank you. Um, my comments are also directed at the uh, CAO as well. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't quite hear your, um, your comments when the presentation was made at the end. Um, so I'm going to ask a question that I think might be similar, but I'm concerned that we have a compensation and salary review, but it's not just that in scope. It also is looking for um, service reviews. It's, it's doing service reviews, potentially identifying areas for um, opportunities for um, efficiencies, et cetera. Um, and I would like to know, are we in fact scheduled to get that report by the end of August? Is my recollection correct? Um, through Madam Mayor to Councilor Townsend, the report will be completed by the end of August. I'm expecting that it will be coming to Council in September. Okay, um, thank you. So the, the concern I would have with adding this to it um, would be the compensation and salary seems to be, from what was said before, really well um, underhand. But I wasn't convinced that the service review, because it wasn't reported, was as well in hand. So I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize that part of it either. But I certainly would like a lot more information before, you know, I said to um, the staff, you know, let's do more work on it. Because this isn't just looking at whether we want to be certified or belong to a group that is looking at livable wage. It's also the implications of it. It's looking at, and what I mean by that is, if we're okay, then it's not a big deal. If we're not, then we need to get the results before deciding that we need to look at it further. We would need to understand the budget impact. We need to look at how we would deal with suppliers if we're even able to go there in that way. So I see it as a bigger deal than just doing it as part of compensation. Could you comment on that for me, please? Yes, please and, go ahead. And thank, you, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and Councillor Townsend, thank you for raising that. Um, my what I would have expected from the consultant is to say exactly that you're, you're, you're fine or you have some work to do if that's where you want to get. I don't, it, it's not in her scope of work to actually do the analysis of what it would take or what it would look like. Um, she, can, she can make a comment on it and let us know how we stand in a living wage uh, sphere. But if council would like us to pursue it further, then that is a little bit more work and that's something that um, would likely involve um, the assistance of our treasurer to deal with what those implications would look like. So, so at this point, you know, I mean, right now, if um, council would like me to have a conversation with her to assess where we are in that spectrum of, of the living wage, um, of, of being a living wage employer, that's doable, but all that analysis that, that you're thinking would need to happen, council, which I agree with, wouldn't happen under this comp review. I'm also wondering if we could get once the results are out, it's pretty easy to take the living wage rate and multiply by number of hours and translate that back to, you know, an annual salary or whatever and say we are or are not, mm -hmm. you know, compliant ourselves. So we do, do we really need to um, distract or get the consultant even involved? Is that not something we could do in house? Um, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, Councillor. I, I think, you know, that I had, honestly, it was a very brief conversation with the consultant just to say, basically, you know, th this has come up in a meeting. Um, just, you know, do you have any experience with that? And she said she has experience. She would be able to tell us 
if we're falling with, you know, if we're close, if we're, if we're there, or if there's work to do. And that would be the end of what she'd be prepared to give us without um, adjusting either her scope of work or providing, you know, assistance. But I, but I agree with you. Perhaps that is something that we could look at if we're just doing basic math. Because yep. we do have that figure, right? 1839. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't object to looking at it in the future. I'm just concerned mm -hmm. that I don't want to see any of that work we've already got scheduled um, deferred or um, not been able to complete it within the time frames. And so, you know, I won't be supporting doing it at this point, but I would be supporting if we said do it after the review and when staff uh, feels that it, it fits for the workload, because I know we have a lot of outstanding items that still haven't quite been completed on the, uh, the list of tasks that you report on regularly. So um, I just thought I would ask those questions first to make sure my comment wouldn't be out of line. But that's why I wouldn't support it at this point the way it's worded. But if we want to say do it after um, when we can fit it onto our work schedule, I'd be very happy to support it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Herger, please. Thank you, Chair. Just to follow up with uh, my previous comment, I note that June 30th Committee of the Whole meeting, the minutes reflect that uh, Ms. Love was the ML consultant that re attended that meeting. And it says Ms. Love addressed questions and concerns raised by council members. Chatsworth and Hanover will be considered as additional comparators and a living wage will be investigated as a component of the employee compensation portion of the review. So I'm just curious what those words would mean if they don't mean that our consultant who is looking at all the employee wages, to me that Good. means yep. she's also going to investigate the living wage component. Good question, Councillor. Madam CAO, please for clarity. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor. Yes, that, that's, that's my recollection. And when I spoke with Ms. Love, it was, for, she said what she would be able to provide is in our pay grid, which positions are falling within the living wage um, bracket and which aren't. She wouldn't be able to analyze what that looks like from a financial perspective, any implications, but she'd be able to tell us, you know, you're 90% there, you know, maybe, maybe we hit one of the three levels. It's that kind of assessment that she would be able to do for us. So uh, with that in mind, I am prepared to just wait for our consultant and not to deviate or to add to the work until we until we receive that information and I think knowing you know and having the delegation earlier in our meeting I think it's very um, easy for us to see if we're living up to that or how we could do better our own report car card of council but at this time I would not be supportive of asking um, for anything more I think our, our consultant has it well in hand thank you Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson and then Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson here. Yeah, that would be my concern is I, I don't want to see us laying on too much more to um, some of the things that we already have on the go, like the, the consultants um, has a bit of a mandate and I think it'll be easy enough to look at once we have the, the data. Um, I just think we have a lot of things on the go and I don't want to keep putting more on to our staff um, you know this COVID thing has uh, definitely caused a lot of issues and we need to we have no idea what our bottom line is going to be coming out of this thing so I really don't want to start piling things on too much uh, I'd just like to continue on with what we've got and move forward. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Shea. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and thanks for the conversation. Um, so I hear what Council's um, concerns are, and um, just looking at the um, action piece from the motion, um, it wasn't to uh, create more work for the consultant, because as we're aware, the consultant's working in, within very specific parameters, but I do appreciate how the consultant can, can pull a little bit of information out of that for us and highlight where we, um, where we sit in terms of living wage. Um, it, was a, it was meant to be um, not a huge study, but just a, a staff report in which staff could have the opportunity to connect with um, 
the Ontario Living Wage Network and with United Way of Bruce Gray to bring um, to bring some of that information to council because this is the moment now as we're looking at the the wage grid and and employee compensation, this is the moment when we're making these policy decisions um, that we have the opportunity to look with this other, this lens of, of health and all policies. Um, and so should we, um, I, should we make that decision in absence of this information? I think we've missed a, a really good opportunity. Um, so I, I, think, I think this is the moment uh, where we can use the lens, this health and all policy lenses, as we're looking at um, the information that the consultant would be bringing forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shea, please. Uh, thank you. It's Councillor Shea. I think the, uh, the request uh, within this um, motion is quite reasonable. A staff report on the feasibility. Uh, it's not saying, you know, the implementation of uh, adopting a living wage, just a, a reporting on the feasibility. But I am sensitive to the point that a couple of councillors have brought up about, uh, you know, uh, staff workload. Um, you know, this is this is this this uh, motion asks that the report come ahead of or in conjunction with, and that's um, already has a date attached to it. So my question is to Ms. Ms. Johnston: um, Do you feel that this is something that is within your um, ability to produce a, uh, a staff report on the feasibility of this issue in that time frame. Madam CAO, your response, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor, for the question. My preference would be that we let the consultant bring her findings, and that would then give me a benchmark of what I'm asking for in this staff report when I consult with the United Way and the Ontario Living Wage Network, because right now I'm working on I'd be working with numbers that are not probably going to be as accurate as the new numbers would show. So, um, you know, I don't know if there's a friendly amendment in the works here or what's where we're heading, but, um, you know, I, I think this would be a very uh, important exercise for sure, but perhaps the timing could be adjusted a little bit until we have the results of the consultant's report. It's a very, it's a very big project that she's got on her plate and a very quick time turnaround. So uh, I'll leave it at that. So, um, as a, as a follow-up, if I may, um, yes. we, the consultant will de deliver a report in August. We will see it in September. Um, the recommendations of that report might not be rec uh, implemented for several months or even, you know, until the next budget cycle, uh, most likely, I assume. Three, Madam Mayor. Yes, I, please. I, I think that that is a logical chron chronology, Councillor. Yes. Okay. Um, well, uh, could I be allowed to make a friendly amendment to this uh, that says um, to be received uh, ahead of the implementation of the recommendations of the compensation review report? I'm, I'm going to look to Madam Clerk to determine whether that's friendly within the scope. And if it is, then I'll go to the mover and seconder. But I'm looking at you for whether that is um, changing it out. To be received ahead of implementation. Of the, the first part recommendations of in the compensation review report. Yeah. Just okay. give her a moment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to you, Your Worship. It is up to uh, the mover, Councillor Hamilton, and the seconder to consider, uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, to consider if that timeline, if they're open to changing that, to read um, prior to the implementation instead of with, uh, ahead of or with the compensation review report. Um, if the mover and seconder are agreeable to that change in the timeline, then we can amend the resolution. If they'd rather not change it, then we'll uh, vote on it as it is. Or you can move an amendment as well to make it a formal amendment. Thank you very much for that. So, um, 
Councillor Hamilton as a mover of this motion and also the presenter of the notice of motion. Um, is this considered uh, friendly and do you agree with it or do you wish your notice or your motion to stand? Thank you and, and thank you Councillor Shea for the friendly amendment. I think that's that sounds like a really good compromise and, and I appreciate um, the dialogue uh, with our CEO and just the conversations shaping the motion. I think it's most appropriate. So yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As a seconder, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you in favor of um, the amendment, the friendly amendment to the motion? Yes, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Uh, yes, this, after listening to the discussion, uh, I will uh, gladly accept that. Okay, very good. Are there any other questions or comments with regard to uh, the motion that is before us? Seeing none, I will call the question. Um, so for clarity, Madam CAO, could you just uh, identify on the last action paragraph what it is um, now to read? Oh, one moment, please. I think you're good now. Okay, thank you. Through you, Your Worship. I'll just read the uh, be it resolved. Yes, Worship. please. Therefore, be it resolved that staff report on the feasibility of a living wage for the municipality of West Gray in consultation with the United Way of Bruce Gray and the Ontario Living Wage Network to be received ahead of the implementation of the compensation review report. So it's all of the above whereas is, including the therefore be it resolved that was just read by uh, Madam Clerk. Any questions? On the motion, all those in favor, please signify with a check mark. Those opposed, please signify with an X mark. I will begin. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend, please state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, I'm in favor. Councillor Herger, please state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Herger, no. Councillor Shea, please state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, please state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, please state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, please state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion does carry. Thank you, please clear your dashboard. Okay, we're moving on to 16.2. We have another uh, notice of motion. This is moved by Councillor Shea. Councillor Shea, I invite you to read your motion. Thank you, this is Councillor Shea. Whereas the, munis the municipality of West Gray committed in its 2013 multi-year accessibility plan, quote, to ensure all new websites and content of, on those sites conform to WCAG 2.0 level A, by January 1st, 2014, end quote, and further that, quote, the municipality will take the following steps to make all websites and content conform with WCAG 2.0 level AA by January 1st, 2021, bullet point, train staff in the requirements of WCAG 2.0 level AA, next bullet point, ensure that all new information posted on the website conforms with WCAG 2.0 level AA, end quote, and whereas the municipality of West Gray has addressed issues pertaining to non-accessible documents by removing existing online documents previously available to the public and ceasing to include non-accessible documents in council agendas, therefore be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does recommit to identifying mechanisms by which all previously publicly available documents, as well as future council business documents, will be made accessible and available to the public by January 1st, 2021, and that staff will prepare a report by September 15th, 2020, outlining options to achieve this. Thank you. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Townsend, are you seconding this motion? Yes, I'm seconding this motion. I'd like to speak to it as well, please. 
I think this is a good time and then I'll put it over and ask for uh, questions or comments from other members of council. Please proceed, Councillor Townsend. Thank you. Um, as I think uh, the discussion that's been had in previous meetings um, has indicated that I'm very disappointed that we do have all those um, previously available online documents uh, removed. And so I would like to put an amendment to uh, Councillor Shea's um, motion uh, to address that. So can we do that now? I would appreciate the time. I think now is the time. Thank you. Um, prior to the last paragraph um, mm -hmm. of uh, Councillor Shea's, um, I'm suggesting that we insert, therefore be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents are once again made public publicly available online by August 21st, 2000 and further. And then you would follow with the last paragraph of um, Councillor Shea. The reason I'm putting that forward is because I know there are processes and procedures that can be done to make that happen. I think a month would be a fair process and it's definitely a better alternative than perhaps waiting as long as six months and even longer for some of them uh, to get them converted. And I don't know how long it will be, but uh, based on the last conversation that was held at council uh, and committee, the whole, sorry, it seemed to be that it was going to take as much time as they could between now and the end of the year. So I think this is a compromise to get as many onto them. And I know there are ways as I know um, staff knows there are ways and I'd like to uh, have one of those selected and the documents reinstated. That is the reason for my amendment. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to, um, if you don't mind, Councillor, could you reread that just a little slower, please? Because I'd like everybody to have the clarity and then I would be looking to Councillor Shea um, to determine whether that is something he wishes to consider for his motion or not. So would you mind very much, Councillor, to reread it? Okay, uh, therefore, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents are once again publicly available online by August 21st, 2020. Okay, got it. So that... Um... Councillor Shea, is this uh, something you would consider for your um, motion? Here, I'm going to ask the clerk just for uh, clarity on this. Um, I, I would want to go to the mover and seconder to obviously the seconder is uh, in favor of this. I need to go to the mover, but first I would like uh, at some point, not first, but at some point, clarity from uh, Madam CAO to determine whether this can be achieved by August 21st, 2020, because we do already have in the queue that a report is coming forward from her. So, uh, Madam CAO, could you just provide some, ins uh, sorry, Madam Clerk, <laughs> could you provide some clarity in terms of when I can ask that question to the CAO? Uh Yes, thank you through you, Your Worship. Uh, if this is um, a moved amendment to the motion, I'll need Councillor Townsend to review the wording for me again. I yep. didn't catch it all. Um, and I think it is up to the mover. It is a significant change to the intent of, yes. of the original, of the main motion. So it would in, be entirely up to the mover if this was what he thought was in line with his intent. Got I it. see it as quite a, a significant change and perhaps as um, perhaps Councillor Townsend um, would need to move an amendment in Got which it. case I'll clarify the wording and if I guess the process would be to decide first is this a friendly amendment and we're adjusting a few words that's up to Councillor Shea or is it a moved amendment to the main motion? I totally got it. I'll go to the councillor, uh, Councillor Shea, as the mover, and see um, 
where uh, he stands on this and that'll at that point determine whether I'm going to ask my question to the CAO. Thank you for all that procedure. Uh, yes, it's Councillor Shea, <laughs> I'm turning to you. Is this a friendly amendment or do you wish your motion to stand as presented? This is Councillor Shea. Um, I appreciate the uh, perspective that uh, Councillor Townsend is coming from, um, and that is that you know, you know this is a, a matter of grave urgency, and that he has, I believe, in consultation with staff, identified workarounds that could make this possible. However, um, I, as much as I uh, applaud his um, innovation in this, I would like to put the question of whether this uh, amendment should be part of the motion to council. So I'm going to decline having it as a friendly amendment okay. and have the council decide whether this should be an amendment or not. Okay, so you've declined it. Now, thank you very much. So Councillor uh, Townsend, this is not friendly and uh, will not be included into this main motion. Uh, do you still stand as the seconder? Uh, yes, um, assuming I can still put through the motion to the rest of council for an amendment as uh, Councillor Shea indicated. If I have to remove myself from that to do that procedurally, I will do that as well. No, it's not uh, in effect needing you to remove yourself in order to move an amendment, but I just wanted to determine whether on this main motion, if, if your name is going to stand, of which you confirmed. Now, Madam Clerk, in terms of uh, the motion, uh, amending motion, which uh, Councillor Townsend has indicated uh, to be the mover of, I am just looking for um, this procedure to handle um, the amendment first and we're getting your mic unmuted. Oh, I've been asked, um, members of council, I've been asked uh, to have a moment for uh, the uh, clerk to consult the procedural bylaw. So we're just gonna take a moment. I, I think the, um, the request is very appropriate. So please stand by, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, could I make one more comment regarding my request? Yes, go ahead before I um, get every, uh, have the uh, clerk and uh, CAO not paying attention. So hang on, um, uh, staff members, please. Uh, um, Councillor Townsend, what is it that you uh, wanted to say before our staff are dealing with this? Okay, I wanted to point out, which I should have done first. Um, my request is not necessarily to make the documents conforming where Councillor um, Chase is and that is a really big deal but still yeah. to be accomplished so it's it's a fairly minor activity. Well thank you very much for that clarity. We're now going to uh, just afford staff an opportunity to review and we will be right back. Thank you very much one and all.
Thank you very much, members of council and uh, anyone listening in from time to time, uh, there will be a requirement where staff need to consult the procedural bylaw. Um, and this happened to be one of those uh, times so that we want to ensure that we have all the clarity and information before us. So we do have a main motion which will be addressed after there is the potential for an amendment. So we have an amendment moved by Councillor Townsend. Councillor Townsend, I would ask that you restate your motion. Thank you. Therefore, be it resolved that the municipality, oh, sorry, um, I'll start by saying that this motion is to be inserted just prior to the last paragraph in the uh, motion that has already been presented by Councillor Shea. Therefore, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents are once again made publicly available online by August 21st, 2020 and further and further. And then it moves into the last, um, the last paragraph. Thank you. And uh, thank you for that background music, Councillor Townsend. It just added to your um, motion there. Is there, is there a seconder to this motion? Councillor Hergert, are you seconding this motion? Councillor Hergert, yes. Madam CAO? I'd like um, you to pro provide some clarity from a staff perspective. And then I'm also going to go back to the members of council and ask if there's any questions. And I do see there are a couple. Madam CAO, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So Councillor Townsend, if I may, uh, what I picked up from your motion is that you would like us by August 21st to identify a process to repost uh, the public documents, realizing that those documents will not be AODA compliant, but, you, but what you're asking us to do is come back to council with a process to get them back online. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not asking you to come back um, to, I'm not asking you to come back to council. I'm actually saying do it by then, that's a month. Um, however, if you feel you need to, then I'm, I'm more than happy to put that in. But I do so, hope the time is of the essence. Uh, and thank you for that. I still don't know that I have the clarity, unless I didn't hear it right, but I thought that you said, be it resolved, that staff identify a process to repost documents by August 21st. So, right. so I'm making, in my mind, I, I'm not making the connection clearly that you want a process or you want the documents available. And I, and I hesitate to post inaccessible documents on a website where we received a grant to make it an accessible website. So I'd have to really put some, put my mind around how that would even work. Okay, so my so, request is that they actually get posted. So if posted you have on, wording that would be better for you, I'm fine with that. So, so for clarity then, we're going to post inaccessible documents on our accessible website. That's what you're asking? No, I'm asking you to find a process where you can in fact um, uh, make non-conforming documents available um, using the current website. And I do know that's possible because other municipalities are doing it. So Madam CAO is just reflecting on that statement before she provides a response. Um, Please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, uh, I mean, we could do some research. I hate to commit to a timeline when I don't exactly know what's involved in that work. And um, I, I would respectfully ask that we clarify the wording of your motion because I'm not, a, a, a process to repost is very different than just reposting them. So clarity, Councillor Townsend, uh, once again on, on your um, amending motion, please. Okay, um, I'm just having another look at it. Okay. Okay, um, I'll read it again. Yes, please. Order, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process 
by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents um, are uh, posted um, so they again can be made publicly available online by August 21st, 2020. Okay, great. And Councillor Hergert as a seconder, um, there's clarity in that motion. Are you in agreement? Could I ask that they would just be referenced and accessible? So even if it references the old website and people can access it, they can actually obtain it. So I think it's just that it's referenced and that they are accessible by the public. Just a few last words of your motion there. Um, okay. What? Okay, um, Madam Clerk, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just wondering about the amendment. It's yep. changed a little bit from when it was moved and seconded. So the wording has been changed um, with the last reading. So. What I understand is moved by Councillor Townsend, seconded by Councillor Hergert, that the main motion be amended by adding, just prior to the last paragraph of the main motion, uh, therefore be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available online be reposted on the website by August 21st, 2020? Or does it read, are posted so they can be again made available online by August 2020? That last, that last portion has changed between when it was moved and seconded and when it was repeated back. So just so I get the wording correct in the minutes. Yeah, fair enough. Councillor Townsend. Okay, I'm going to begin uh, with the last portion of that, uh, where I said were previously publicly available as online, sorry, as online documents. Are as posted, online documents? Right. Okay. Um, so they are once again made publicly available online, right, by August 21st, right, through... Okay the new website. That's different words again. Right, so I'm, I'm making it clearer as, because you didn't catch it the first time, I thought I would make it a little more clearer by doing that. It, it changes what was moved and seconded, so. I was asked to change it, so I did. No, um, I just okay. need, to be Please clear. go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Okay. To be clear on the wording for the mover and seconder, and I guess it's important that the seconder is still um, content with seconding this amending motion. So be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents um, are posted so they can be again made available online by August 21st, 2020. Is that correct? Uh, just if the mover and seconder are, if that's the correct wording, then- through, through the new website. Mm -hmm. So you're good with the, the language, with correct, Councillor Townsend? Yeah. Pardon me? Yes, I am. Very good. Councillor Hergert, are you fine with the clarity on the wording as a seconder? So the only word that I would like changed is that they are posted, so they are made available online. Just that word posted, I want it to be that they are able to be referenced back to the old website, if that's all we can do between now and August. If that's all we can do, is that they're referenceable to our old website, fine. Madam CAO, is that even a possibility? And I would, I, I just want the question 
it's been a question asked, I'm looking for an answer. And then if it is possible, then I'd go back to the mover to see if he's okay with that uh, change. Please go ahead, Madam CAL. I was just checking with uh, staff and our old website is no longer available. Um, it's, it's, it's been taken down. Um, Councillor Herbert, if I may ask, you had mentioned about a list of, of um, all of those documents. I mean, we could, we could put a list with a, with a link saying this is a work in progress um, or direct them to somewhere where they could find the documents. But I'm just we're going down a, a spiral here that I'm not quite sure exactly what I can do to, to be successful in this motion. So our old website is not accessible or not available any longer. So that's our first hurdle. And then um, Councillor Townsend, you, your um, request to have this completed by August 21st. Um, if, if we realize that we can't, we still have a council meeting in between that we will come back to council and uh, explain what we've discovered and what that could look like. I would be fine with that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Councillor Townsend is good with the wording. Councillor um, Councillor Herger, are you okay with the wording as presented by Councillor Townsend? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I do see that Councillor Hutchinson has a question. Now that we got the, um, the motion, um, actually, um, you know what? I'm going to have the uh, clerk read the motion again. I know, but that's what we're going to do here. And then I'm going to go to Councillor Hutchinson for a question so that everybody is abundantly clear. Thank, Thank you. you. Through you, Your Worship, the motion on the floor at this point in time, moved by Councillor Townsend, seconded by Councillor Hergert, is that the main motion be amended by adding, just prior to the last paragraph of the main motion, therefore be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents are posted so they can be again made available online by August 21st, 2020 through the new website. Thank you. So we have a mover and seconder. We have clarity on the amending motion. Councillor Hutchinson, you have a question, take it away. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson. So uh, I have a concern with, um, First of all, putting documents on the website, as the CAO has mentioned, that are not accessible when we're promoting that our web, since our website is accessible. Uh, I'm just wondering, can we not uh, do something where it's the documents are um, available upon request? Um, just because in Councillor Shea's um, motion, he mentions that um, public available documents as well as future council business will be made accessible and available to the public uh, by January 1st. So he's talking about um, previously public available documents. So he's, he's covered that part of it. His timeline gives us till January 21st. I don't, I don't want to yeah. put too much pressure on staff when, when we're, we're, we're creating a new website and, and we're doing a lot of new things. And I think we have to understand that it takes time to, to achieve some of these things and, and not everything's going to be um, uh, up to speed at the same time. So uh, I'm just wondering, um, you know, are we making, are we, are we trying to do something that's maybe not achievable? Uh, I know our CEO seems to be hesitant and, and what, what she's really asked here. Yes, uh, I agree that we should make those documents available uh, previous time, but maybe it's just by request until we can make them accessible for our new website. Does that make couple sense? Questions. Absolutely, it does. Thank you for seeking clarity. A couple questions in that. I know you've been listening intently, uh, Madam CAO. Your response, please. Responses. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor, for, um, for opening this door for me. As I'm sitting here thinking about it, I can appreciate that someone may go on our website and look for a bylaw. And if they do a search and there's no match, they would assume that there is no bylaw, for example, I don't know, pool enclosures or something like that. Then they would think I don't need a fence. So perhaps in the interim, we, we, we would be able to achieve 
a listing of all the bylaws so that if someone searches for something, there is a match. But then if, they, if the bylaw has not been converted yet, we would be able to, to know that they can call us to receive an electronic copy or whatever format they would need. That way we've, we've, we've reposted all of those documents with, with a note saying, you know, it's a work in progress, please call us and, and we'll make uh, arrangements for you to receive what you're looking for. That's, that could be achievable, but I do have concerns about putting documents back out there that we know are not accessible. Councillor Hutchinson? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's basically what I was, was saying is that um, I think some way of achieving, um, you know, ex access for now uh, with the intent of trying to get it uh, up, and, up and running by the end of the year. Um, I just think that's more achievable. So um, that would be my preference uh, to go with the original motion that uh, Councillor Shea has uh -huh. and um, make the other ones available upon request. Other documents. Okay. Anything further? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. And I think the idea is we all want that information very, avail very available. We're just in a transition period. So if there's an opportunity, which uh, Madam CAO is suggesting, a uh, full listing of the, the bylaws and making that very clear, and also the opportunity. And I, I um, like that idea. It's already it's listed and in part on our, our website already if, if you want, you're seeking additional information. But make it very clear that individuals can uh, receive this um, information under the format that they require. Uh, and then you're still working on uh, the ability to get that information posted as quickly as possible. And you're also, I believe, preparing a report that is dealing with solutions for this. Um, I just wonder if you could comment on my, my questions before I go to the list of hands that are on the dashboard. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, so where I'm, my understanding is right now is that it's doable for us to have an inventory list of bylaws that have been passed by the by the Council of Municipality. Uh, someone may click on on one, and there would be a note saying that uh, this is uh, being it's still a, being converted or whatever the language is. Uh, please call the clerk's office to receive a copy of this bylaw in the format that you would like. That achieves at least that um, the listing is there. Everybody knows the bylaws that the municipality has passed and it, uh, it continues with the customer service that we would provide it in the interim until we can post it in an accessible format. And Madam CAO, any idea when we can, if, if August 21st, as I have an indication from you, that is probably not as achievable as being able to work through this whole process. Do you have a um, better sense of a potential timeline or deadline, if you will, for achieving uh, getting the documents accessible, meaning having the accessibility component and also having access on our website? Yes, yes and thank you, Madam Mayor. I was comfortable with, with Councillor Shea's original motion saying, come back mid-September, tell us what this is going to look like. How do we achieve this? Uh, with keeping in mind that that deadline of January 1st, 2021, I think, I think staff and I were, we were comfortable with that. Um, and, and I would like to be able to offer something to Councillor Townsend's motion about in the interim, how do people find out bylaws that haven't been captured yet? So I don't know if there's a blend where staff can just list a listing of bylaws some of them will open up a PDF that's been converted. Others will say, please call the clerk for, for a format. That's doable in the, in the next few weeks. But um, to be able to hit that September 15th deadline, which I think is achievable, depending on how much work we add to this, Councillor Shea's motion is, is achievable. Councillor Townsend's request, we may have a workaround if he's open to that conversation. Thank you. Okay, I have um, a listing of three members of council. I am going to go with Deputy Mayor Hutchinson as I believe a first time speaker on this. So I'll go to Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, then to Councillor Townsend, and then to Councillor Hergert. So Deputy Mayor Hutchinson first, please. Thank you, Mayor Ray Robinson. It's uh, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson here. I'm, uh, I'm leaning more towards the original motion because I still don't quite get the uh, second motion there because it sounds like a double we're asking for a process 
by the 21st, but in the next sentence, it's it's almost basically saying we want an action or we want it done. And I don't, I don't I'm just listening to the conversation, it's not something to be achieved. I think the original motion has all the, the meat and potatoes that we need in there, and it's the staff have uh, stated that they can achieve that goal. So I would lean more to supporting the, uh, the first motion that would, uh, Councillor Shea brought forward. Uh, just for, again, let's just listen to all the discussion here. But the last, the second motion, I'm hearing process and I'm also hearing an action on to put them on. And I don't, I, I don't have clarity in my mind how that, how that works. If I could get some clarification on that, um, Councillor Townsend's uh, request set a process by the 21st and it also said to have them online. And I don't quite understand that. So I'm going to go to Councillor Townsend um, for your question. Councillor Townsend, please. I'm, I'm glad the point came up in the way that the, the Deputy Mayor said it. First of all, if we have the documents in electronic form, it is not difficult to move them to a third party site and access them that way. We, regardless of what happens with our site being compliant, there will still be times when we will in fact reference non-compliant documents or sites just by the nature of what you do. Not everyone will be compliant at the same time. So the temporary measure is, in, in my mind, to move them to a third party site where they are accessible online like they are now. No, no process to convert them no process to change them, just a process to make them um, available. And I truly believe that is attainable in the month, but I have also said that if in all good faith, staff comes back and says, there is no process we can do within that month, then obviously it won't happen. And I've already said that I'm, I'm agreeable to that. But thank you. Trust me, we are not doing the work twice. If we then do a list of them, that's step one, we still have community members, staff, council, whoever else having extra work and effort to get it. We are reluctant to meet with uh, residents given COVID and I understand that. So from that perspective, this takes that out of the play as well. And it, I, uh, I honestly believe, or I would not have put this forward, it actually reduces the amount of work the staff could have trying to satisfy the requests that come through on not accessing them online. And I think that's your trade-off that is more than worth it. Technically, trust me, it is available. It is possible. It just has to be a desire to do it. Thank you. Councillor Hutchinson, does that, uh, uh, pardon me, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, does that answer your question? Uh, well, 50-50 there, Mayor Robinson. It, 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 I still, the word process by the 21st and an actual action to have that done is of concern because just listen to CAO Johnson, I don't believe it's achievable. Um, you know, we don't know what our staff resources are. We're, we're probably right in, uh, in the middle of, uh, I would assume, summer holidays. And we, I don't know how easy this is to just put them onto a third party site or another, with, I, I don't want that part there. And, and I don't think CAO Johnson knows that without investigating. So if I could reach to the CAO for some clarity on that part of it, that may help my decision. Madam CAO, for clarity. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and thank you, Deputy. Uh, I, you're correct, I, I don't know what's involved in that. I don't know what kind of costs we'd be looking at. Um, but, you know, if, if this motion passes, then that's, that's our investigation. That's where we begin, so. But thank you for asking. Anything further, Deputy Mayor? No, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Robinson. You're welcome. Councillor Townsend, did you have anything further to say um, in addition to how you responded to the Deputy Mayor? You have the mic right now. Just waiting for the prompt for the unmute. There you um, go, Councillor Townsend. No, nothing at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then I'm going to move on to Councillor Herger, please. 
Well, thank you, Chair. I believe that our council was wanting at the very essence of better communication, more transparency, uh, all of these buzzwords. But when it comes to the practice, this is it. We had a website with a uh, gentle online start that has been identified as having some severe deficiencies for people, the public, to access documents that we require and we have deemed bylaws. So I do appreciate that the CAO could bring forward at, at minimum a list of all the bylaws that seems satisfactory. However, I've mentioned this before, when people go to our website and we've tried to direct people to go to the website. There's lots of good information on the website. Go there, you'll find it. And you can get minutes online and you can find documents online. So everything that we've talked about for the last two years nearly is now gone and we have to restart. Um, I, I'm not sure what our enforceability of a bylaw is at this time when we would deem public notice to be well, it's on our website. That's our public notice. So I'm curious if we're even in compliance. We, we had talked about putting a property listing, all the assets that West Gray owns, put them on our website. We had just gotten that done and now that information is gone. So I'm really struggling to see how, that, how we are more transparent. We all like to have shiny new things and that's our website and it, you know, it looks beautiful but it doesn't have the necessary parts, the, the actual function that we need it to have. The form is beautiful, but the functionality of it is impractical and, and basically leaves bylaws, um, you know, stacked nicely in our cupboards. And how could we enforce a bylaw that the public may come to us and say, there wasn't on your website, I checked there, and you know, it was Friday afternoon and I put the pool up, so there it is. What, what do we have to stand on? I'm, I'm somewhat, I, I'm really disappointed actually that we haven't been able to figure out how to do a new website and to keep the, uh, the actual form that we need to, to give public notice. And I'm, ju I'm just going to ask our CAO if, um, are we in compliance for giving notice of, of everything, of minutes past, of, you know, our records retention policy we just implemented. If that's not online, are we in compliance with our new record retention policy? How would, how would the public access uh, an agenda from March of this year? So I think there's big questions that need to be answered swiftly. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, so um, is there an ability for Madam CAO or the clerk to respond to that? And then I do want to just confirm that there's nobody else that wishes to speak because I'd like to get to a vote on this amending motion. So are you able to respond to the inquiry? Um, Madam CAO or Madam Clerk, please. Um, We're in compliance with our bylaws because there are bylaws that's and great. there's other formats by which, I'll just start, but there's other ways by which we have the bylaws if we didn't have a website, there's other access points. Anyway, I'm just putting out there, I like the ability to have the access on the website. Let me just make that clear. I'm very much in favor of the transparency and the, uh, the ability to have the um, documents on our website. That I'm just making clear. But are we in compliance with all of our bylaws overall is the question from uh, Councillor Herger. So if we could have a response to that and then uh, just I'd like to move on with the amendment to the um, motion. So the bylaws are in place, they're duly approved. So they are on the record of that we have them enforceable. Um, the fact that whether it's on the website or not does not uh, negate the enforceability. I'm just putting it out there, but I'm looking for a staff comment. Either is that correct or is there something further that we need a response to? Okay, so would you mind just saying that and then uh, I can ha we can have the question answered later after the amendment, so that's fine. Uh, so Clerk Sharback, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I would just um, 
like to make note that there is a motion to amend on the floor. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, there is nothing in this amending motion that refers to bylaw enforcement or anything like that. Perhaps if this motion to amend um, was addressed and then directly after the, the main motion was addressed, um, we can speak to um, the, inquiry? The, the, the inquiry about bylaws. Okay, you're saying the question is far off from the amendment. Let's deal with the amendment unless there's any other questions. That's right. And then uh, to deal with the main motion and then we can have the question answered is how you're determining? Yes, we need to okay. stick with this motion that's on the floor. Okay, so you've heard that from the clerk. Are there any other questions germane to the amendment? Seeing none. Um, we do have a mover for the amendment, which is Councillor Townsend, a seconder, which is Councillor Herger. I'm going to ask for that amendment to be read again. Please, um, Clerk Sharpak. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you, moved by Councillor Townsend, seconded by Councillor Herger, that the main motion be amended uh, by adding just prior to the last paragraph of the main motion, Therefore, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that removed that were previously publicly available as online documents are posted so that they can be again made available online by August 21st, 2020 through the new website. Okay, on the, amend on the amending motion, all those in favor by signifying with a check mark all those opposed by um, uh, signifying with an X mark. I will begin. Mayor Christine Robinson, I am in favor of this motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, not in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you're voting. Councillor Hutchison, not in favor. Motion carried. Please clear your dashboard. Including you, Councillor Hutchinson. Thank you. On the main motion, moved by Councillor Shea, seconded by Councillor Townsend. I'm going to have um, the clerk read the motion before us. It's been a long time. Uh, we've had a lot of dialogue, so I'm looking for um, clarity for everyone to vote on. Thank you, Thuria, Your Worship. Um, the main motion moved by Councillor Shea, seconded by Councillor Townsend. Whereas the municipality of West Gray committed in its 2013 multi-year accessibility plan to ensure all new websites and content on those sites conform with WCAG 2.0 level A by January 1st, 2014. And further that the municipality will take the following steps to make all websites and content conform with WCAG 2.0 level AA by January 1, 2021, train staff in the requirements of WCAG 2.0 level AA, ensure that all new information posted on the website conforms with WCAG 2.0 AA, level AA, sorry, and whereas the municipality of West Gray has addressed issues pertaining to non-accessible documents, by removing existing online documents previously available to the public and ceasing to include non-accessible documents in the council agendas. Therefore, be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does commit to identifying a process by which all documents removed that were previously publicly available as online documents 
are posted so they can be again made be made available online by August 21st, 2020 through the new website. Um, and that's then the final statement in this is therefore be it resolved that the municipality of West Gray does recommit to identifying mechanisms by which all previously publicly available documents as well as future council business documents will be made accessible and available to the public by January 1, 2021 and the staff will repair a report by September 15th, 2020 outlining options to achieve this. Thank you. Any questions, members of council, on the main motion? Councillor Townsend? Yeah, sorry. The last paragraph that was read is different from the one that I thought was in the motion. Am I, am I missing something? Oh, no, it has changed. I'm sorry. It did change okay. from the version I saw earlier. So I would draw my question. Okay, but I appreciate the clarity for, for you because you. you are going to be voting on this. I know. <laughs> right. Any other questions, members of council? Seeing none, on this main motion, all those in favor, please signify with a check mark. Those not in favor, please signify with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson here. I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, yes. Motion carried. Okay, that takes care of the, um, the two motions that were presented under item 16. Um, I do have a notice of motion. Mayor Christine Robinson, I have a notice of motion for the uh, next council meeting. And this is dealing with the West Gray Youth Action Committee. I will have the um, appropriate um, motion prepared for the uh, next agenda. Thank you very much. Councillor Hergert, you have a notice of motion as well. Please proceed. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Notice of motion, whereas West Gray has a 2014. Oh, Councillor Herger, please pardon me. Um, we're just looking for the item or the topic and then the, the next um, agenda, you will um, read it into the record. So I'm just looking for procedurally, the clerk is asking just for the topic, similar to I just gave the topic of the notice of motion. Bridge connectivity and asset management. Bridge Connectivity and Asset Management. Thank you very much. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. I will have a notice of motion regarding a climate action plan. Thank you. Thank you. Action plan. Action plan. Anything further, members of council? Okay. So we're moving off item 16. Item 17, closed session, incomplete items only. That is an, uh, Councillor Townsend, I notice your hand. Yes, thank you. Um, I thought we were gonna talk about the other topic that the clerk had. I wasn't sure when and where we were gonna do it. And that had to do with some further answering of a question that I think Councillor Herger uh, raised. Oh, okay. So this was in regard, the question uh, was, thank you, Councillor Townsend. Uh, the question is, um, are, are bylaws in compliance if they're not on the website? Or do our bylaws still hold um, uh, that they're bylaws, effectively? Uh, Clerk Sherbach, I'm going to ask you to respond to that as the keeper of the bylaws, but also procedural. And um, uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, yes, whether the bylaws are on the website or not, or even if we have a website or not, 
it doesn't affect the legality of the bylaws or the ability of the municipality to enforce its bylaws. Yes, that was the second component. Are they still enforceable? That was it. So yes. please stay. Okay, yes. Um, thank you, Councillor Townsend, for that. Councillor Herger, was there something further on your question? Because I paraphrased. Thank you very much. Actually, my question would be, how are we giving notice of any bylaws that we are either passing or amending or, um, you know, getting rid of? How will we give notice to the public of any change in status of any bylaw? Yeah, and thank you for that additional question. Um, Madam Clerk, please. Through you, Your Worship. Uh, the notice of bylaws is our agenda. And that's set out in the procedural bylaw. And the requirements for the procedural bylaw are framed in the Municipal Act. So we are required to have that procedural bylaw that says, how do we carry out the business of the municipality? And uh, the bylaws are addressed. Um, they're on an agenda that's made public and uh, they're addressed at public meetings okay. in open session. Okay. So, I, well, I have a question further that uh, earlier this evening, about five o'clock, I tried to access our municipal website for the um, minutes, agendas, da da da, and I got a 404 error, and it's at five o'clock when there's a meeting at seven o'clock. Now, I already had it downloaded. However, if a member of the public went to our website at that time and it wasn't working, um, you know, we don't actually publish an agenda anywhere other than our website. So I guess I'm looking for, for more communication. Yeah, we did have a technical uh, issue and that actually translated into a portion of our meeting. Yeah, it yeah was getting a delayed a bit. Problem. A problem. Yeah. And, and so this is why I just say like, how do the members of the public, let's say you don't have a computer. This is a, a large demographic of our constituents. So they don't have a computer. So then how would they get notice of our, like, what is public notice? To me, that is information being readily accessible to our public. Okay, so I'm just gonna have this answer because we do not have the item on the agenda, so I don't wanna veer too far, and the clerk is, is um, also looking at me in that regard. Um, when we, we have proposed bylaws, they are um, put on our agenda uh, for consideration of approval. Uh, they're listed in our, they will be duly identified in our minutes. We do have um, news and notices uh, is one way. We also have media releases um, and we do, um, you know, different um, uh, news outlets. Uh, I mean, I'm just putting different information in terms of how we're conveying it. Our website is one vehicle for getting the information out, but we do have additional vehicles. Um, Madam CAO, is there anything further? This isn't an item on the agenda, but the question has been asked um, and answered. But just if you could just elaborate anything further. And then I do want to move on because the question has been asked and answered and we need to move on the agenda. Anything further to supplement for the response? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I appreciate the councillors, uh, you know, what, what's behind the question is, you know, making sure that we're using channels that we have. I would like to point out that the first tax bill of the year includes the council agenda calendar. So if anyone is interested, they, they at least would know when the meetings are being held. Um, and we do have, you know, we do have the news and notice that, that sends out. There's not going to be one solution that's going to fit all, but it certainly is, is, a, is a living um, exercise in getting the word out. Yeah, and I think I really um, put value on our media releases as well. Um, to do this. We are trying to be as um, actively transparent um, uh, for our information as we possibly can. And also to recap, when our bylaws are passed by this council, they are duly bylaws and they're enforceable and they are, are bylaws uh, enacted by this council. So we're dealing with item 17 now, uh, closed session, incomplete items only, that is an NA. Item 18, matters arising from closed session. There isn't anything on this agenda as well, so that uh, necessitates an NA. Item 19, question period. Supervisor Hewlett, is there anyone um, that wishes uh, to have a question asked and responded to? 
Before I begin, members of the public who wish to participate in, during the question period can share their name and ask their question by sending a chat message to myself, Cody Hewlett, Recreation Supervisor, using the chat function, as we discussed earlier, located in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, most likely. Questions will then be placed in sequence in which they were received and read out loud. If you are joining us by telephone or would like to speak directly, um, when prompted, you could raise your hand, which would request you do now. If you have joined us by phone, raising your hand can be done by pressing star nine. Alternatively, if you have joined us electronically, you can um, click on the hand icon, usually located in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. At Supervisor Hewlett, is there anybody in the queue, please? My apologies. At this time, we have received, um, I have received no comments. Okay, I'm just going to wait a moment in the event that there's somebody online um, or that has called in that wishes to identify. Would you also um, watch with me, Council, um, <laughs> Supervisor Hewlett? Yes, absolutely. At this time, it appears we only have staff online with us. Okay. Um, so I would assume we are, will not receive any questions. Fair enough. And thank you very much for identifying that. So we will move on from question period and we'll go on to item 20, which is Municipal Act Notices. Madam Clerk, please. Is there any? Through you, Mayor Robinson. No, there are no notices at this time. Thank you. Item 21, adjournment. Clerk um, Sharbeck, could you please read the motion? Through you, Your Worship. The recommendation is that we do now adjourn at 10.24 p.m to meet again on August 4th, 2020, or at the call of the chair. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, are you moving the motion? Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, I'll move the motion to adjourn. Councillor Townsend, are you seconding the motion? Councillor Townsend, yes, I'm seconding the motion. All those in favor, please indicate with a check mark. Those opposed, please indicate with an X mark. Mayor Christine Robinson here, I am in favor of the motion. Councillor Townsend, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Townsend, in favor. Councillor Herger, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Herger, yes. Councillor Shea, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Shea, yes. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, in favor. Councillor Hamilton, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hamilton, yes. Councillor Hutchinson, state your name and how you are voting. Councillor Hutchinson, in favor. Motion carried. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much, Council. That was um, a very productive uh, Council agenda and look forward to our next meeting. Thank you very much. Good night, all.